6 o'clock. Good morning from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. I am Robert Walsh. Day two of legal tampering in the books. And today is the beginning of the new league year. 3 o'clock today. Every team has got to be cap compliant with all these new free agent additions through trade and signing. But we'll start with the Titans who made a signing late in the night once again. Signing former commander's guard Sadiq Charles. Former teammates with new Titan center Lloyd Cushenberry at LSU. Charles was a fourth-round pick out of LSU who started 18 games over four years in Washington. More clay for Bill Callahan to work with on the offensive line. Titans also doing due diligence on former number one overall pick Chase Young. Young is visiting Tennessee after visiting uh, New Orleans and Carolina. Young has set career highs in sacks, quarterback hits, and pressures in the last year. And the final running back domino fell yesterday as Derrick Henry signed a two-year $16 million deal worth up to $20 million and $9 million guaranteed with the Baltimore Ravens. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and the Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. Wednesday morning and welcome to the middle of your week on Ramon, Kayla, and Will. RKW is brewed by 8th and Roast. The Titans pick up guard help late last night. We've got everything you need to know about that. But the biggest news yesterday, Derrick Henry is off to Baltimore. And unless you are living under a rock, you probably saw all the photoshops and pictures of the newest Titan star who will likely retire or at least continue his later playing days as a Baltimore Raven. 615-737-1045 is our number. Streaming live at 104.5 The Zone TV. Facebook Live, YouTube, Twitter, or Twitch. Twitch links. That's Ramon Foster, Kayla Anderson, Robert Walsh making the show happen. I'm Will Bowling. It is Wednesday, March the 13th, and Derek Henry is a Baltimore Raven. Good morning. Good morning, man. Good morning. Can't believe that. Well, I can, but it is still weird. It's still weird. I mean, he's been here for quite a while, eight seasons, I guess. And I just think it's going to be weird next year, like when you hear the run out and you hear the introductions and you go in the locker room and you know exactly where Derrick Henry stands and he'll be gone. And that's what's so crazy about this business. If you play in it, if you cover it, whatever you might do, if you're a fan of it, um, you're never guaranteed that one place, one person can be in one place for the whole career. And more likely than not, mm-hmm. he's not going to be here. So there he goes to Baltimore. Definitely. I think it's more rare that, that a player stays in one spot for a very long time. In this era of NFL, uh, even the quarterbacks move around. It's fascinating. Uh, seeing the drop yesterday just became, I think, a reality to a uh, conversation we've been having for, I feel like, a year or two when it comes down to Derek. That's what's most fascinating about it to me is – um, and in hindsight, a lot of people are going to ask this question and, and have this ha- conversation or want to have this conversation. Well, why didn't you trade for him? Shut up. Shut it up. It's, I don't even want to hear it. No, absolutely. Why didn't you trade? No, everybody wanted Derek here. As far as fanfare goes, everybody wanted a Derek Henry here. I'm not trying to hear the conversation in hindsight. Well, we should have got something for him. Baltimore wanted him. Not even trying to hear that. No, Derek is a Titan. You wanted to keep him a Titan, and that was delivered upon. And as far as Derek Henry's career goes last year, even behind this offensive line, he still got over 1,000 yards. His legacy's intact here. Derek's time in Tennessee is over. I heard Buck say it yesterday. Um, I think Eddie did a con- had a, did an interview. Eddie George did an interview of speaking about why they go to Dallas. It's like my time in Tennessee was just up. Mm-hmm. And I think this is what it is with Derek, too. So I don't want to hear that side of it in hindsight now. So we should have traded for him. No, you would have been throwing tomatoes at the facility if that was the case. I was in that camp at the trade deadline, and I still am. No. That you should have traded him. Absolutely. Stop. I, why not? Stop. I, I'm confused why so many people are against this after the fact. What do you think they could have got for him? 
Uh, the report at the time from uh, CBS Sports, I linked it on Twitter yesterday, was that the f- fourth round pick for the Ravens in 2024 that could have been a conditional third had they made a run to the AFC Championship game. You could have gotten your third round pick back. And in my opinion, it would be easier now to trade for Legereus Sneed if you had your third round pick this year. Yeah. I'm I'm with you on that, but the powers to be made the decision based holistically on the fact that Derek is a Titan and you want to keep him a Titan. I've been saying for the longest, this offense has got to move forward. Have and the reason that's the reason I'm taking that stance is because that has been my whole conversation for a while when it comes down to Derek and what he does for this team moving forward. He was on an expiring contract. You want to give it to one last hoorah. But I, I, I hate the conversation in hindsight to say, oh, we should have got him. Like, yeah, you should have. But this fan base would have uh, ran in his first year, whoever was calling the shots in his first year, after Vrabel would have possibly, I mean, in this last year, would have possibly been public enemy number one to make a move like that in his year one. That's where I'm coming from with it. You're public enemy number one. If you all, you get rid of Byer during the middle of the season, and at the trade line, you get rid of Derek too. I think now we see the, what the business is, and everybody can forget the actual competition of the season, right? Hindsight That's, pays our bills. You know what I mean, I, I, I love that too. Okay, <laughs> I love that too. But what I'm saying is this: you're public enemy number one. You get rid of Byer and Derek at the trade deadline, and those are the two people that were talked about the most. And according to Derek on Busting with the Boys, the deal was in place. So here we are right now. I'm happy for Derek and everything that he's done here and how it all is happening for him. He's going to a team that will utilize him. Um, we'll see. Bert and I had a big exchange yesterday over the phone about how they're going to use him. So we'll see. <laughs> I think it's just one of those hindsight things, and it's hard because you could go either way. Honestly, you could say, hey, look, we could have gotten a pick. Um, And what was the rest of the season? I mean, they didn't make it to the playoffs. However, Derek did get another 1,000-yard season here. He got a send-off here. There were certain things, I think, from the fan perspective that was probably actually appreciated that he was able to maybe stay here. But overall, if you could have gotten a little bit of value out of him with even, you know, like you said, fourth, possibly third-round pick, uh, if they made it to, what was the AFC championship game that was just the speculation yeah yeah. but you know something like that to get something in return now you're like i wish we would have had that um but i think it it worked out the way it was supposed to work out and if you knew reality was going to hit sooner or later you knew Derek was going to be on the move at some point especially with a new staff yeah for me ramon at least for me it's not hindsight like i think you guys remember at the trade deadline i was in the camp of trade him now at that moment Because I liked Tajay Spears. For me, it's less about, oh, you could have gotten something for Derek because you knew he was going to leave. It's it's almost (laughs) less about that than it was. I wanted a lot more Tajay Spears midseason last year because I felt like this offensive line couldn't be predictable and good at the same time. We talked about that, though. Yeah, we did. And there was a lot of pushback of no. And again, this conversation ain't the front office conversation. Right. From my understanding. Mm -hmm. Unless the front office is is somewhat uh, influenced by that move. I, I don't know who, as, as far as making that move and trying to understand the business side of it, too. Like you said to me, I see what Tajay's capable of. But a lot of people, he's not a big enough back to to carry the load. And we had that conversation. And um, everything about, well, it's, it's the king. And he, he puts fear in people's eyes. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, that's not how this business works. This business is is not personal at all when it comes down to making those types of moves. I think we saw what 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 Tajay was capable of in the Miami game. We saw it in London. We saw it in other facets of this season to where he was capable of carrying the load. The more you gave Tajay the ball, the more he was able to do with it. And I think that's where it became now to me just looking back at it, it it, it was a huge fence in the progress of this team. It ain't no slight at Derek. It's just two styles of NFL that is going on right now. And if Baltimore was begging for him, um, but of course you you having to play the politics of all sides of do we keep him, do we let him go? Or is that maybe that wasn't enough uh, trade capital for Derek? And that's what I, yeah, I was maybe wondering that wasn't. too. I mean, I don't or know that answer. who pulled the plug? I mean, who, who pulled the plug on the deal? Was it a... Amy Adams Strunk that said, look, I, right now we're not doing it. We just tried, traded Kevin Byard. Look, you got to think from a business 
perspective too. A guy that's been a franchise guy here, you want to still continue to put butts in the seat the remainder of the season, which we knew that this was already a rocky season. At least you'd have your franchise guy still here till the end. And again, I don't know. I'm just putting other things out there that maybe that's how the plug got pulled on that deal that was supposedly in place. I don't think it's a killer either way. I think the Titans are in a good position to move forward at running back. And I'm certainly not insinuating that they've just, this is a disaster that they've no, not right. gotten yeah. a pick for Derek and all these things. And uh, to the question of the evident bank chat, Facebook live, YouTube, Twitter, or Twitch, where you can uh, join the discussion about getting a com- compensation pick for Derek Henry. Uh, you will not get a third round pick. Definitely not for Derek. And, uh, Right now, if the Titans keep adding free agents, you will not get anything for any of the free agents that have left you. So I think at the moment they would get there, they would be on the board for something late comp pick wise, but I do not expect them to get any comp picks if they keep adding players. Now that could change, but uh, depending on, you know, who they continue to add, that would be a, a bit of a surprise at this yeah. point. So to AJ and the F and a big chat, no, I, I do not expect them to get anything close to a third round comp pick for Derrick Henry. Yeah, no. Uh, and they got to continue to sign more guys too. So that's, that's right. the other yes, side of do. it is uh, they're still, they got to rebuild this thing back up. So I'm excited to see what today happens. If there are some releases today and all that uh, other jazz has got to happen. I know yesterday was just a little quiet on the Titans front, at bit, least. A little bit. Uh, not in other places. Nope. 615-737-1045. Go ahead, Bert. I think the Sadiq Charles uh, signing is going to fall just under uh, the threshold of counting towards a comp pick. It's too small. I think it has to be over, if it's a one-year deal, over something around $4 million. And this changes every year based on the signings that go around the league. If you guys uh, want to follow somebody who's really up to date with this stuff, Nick Court. K-O-R-T-E is up to date on all of the, the comp pick signings. He's got a big graph on his Twitter that shows who's who's won, who's lost players. Uh, but right now, I think the, the Titans are in line to get a sixth-round co- compensatory pick, and all these picks show up at the end of the round. So rather than thinking of it as a sixth-round pick, it's really like an early seventh. There you go. That's a good explanation. Gotcha. 615-737-1045, streaming live on 104.5 The Zone TV. We will uh, take a look at... The newest Baltimore Raven, Derrick Henry. How much does he still have left in the tank? And should Titans root for him? Titans fans root for him to win a Super Bowl. We'll talk about it next. It's Ramon Foster for Wesley Mortgage. I'm here. I'm going to give you the website right now. Go to whywesley.com. It's W-H-Y-W-E-S-L-E-Y.com. And that's because right now, Wesley Mortgage is currently recruiting top mortgage talent. They are hiring, man. And if you ever ran into their owner, Chuck McDowell, you'll know this about him the moment he starts talking to you. He's a local Nashville native. He cares about the community that he's in and proud to serve it. Also, Chuck reinvests in people and the places that make Nashville such a wonderful place. While other mortgage companies are downsizing, Chuck McDowell and the Wesley Mortgage Team are rapidly expanding in Nashville because Nashville is getting bigger, but it's keeping people working in a career that they love, and they will love to have you join their team. Simple. If you want to join Chuck McDowell and Wesley Mortgage, I'm telling you right now, go to whywesley.com and you will not regret it. Again, whywesley.com.
All right, KW. Ramon, Kalen, Will is brewed by Ethan Rose. Robert Walsh putting us all in our fields this morning. One more touchdown run, baby. I'd be satisfied. Courtesy of Derrick Henry, the newest member of the Baltimore Ravens. Ramon Foster, Kayla Anderson, Will Bowling with you. 615-737-1045. Bert, you had no business playing a banger like this before 630 in the morning. Ramon, who sings this song? I was just going to ask him that. Garth Brooks. Not a bad guess. It sounds like Garth. I think we should just say yeah. That just honestly, right? that's not a bad guess at all. That sounds it's like not. Garth. You know what has to happen on this show? I gotta go to the back and start playing music for you guys. Coming up. <laughs> sure. How about how about that? I'm I'm into that one. We'll we'll see how that one goes. I got some uh, trippy red I want to put out there. Come back here and run uh, this rocket yeah. ship. Some man. Freddie Gibbs. <laughs> I want to put on some some Larry June. I want to play some Play a Fly. I got yeah. Let's do that one. I like that. One. I think Is each cool? uh, each month, one of us should take over the control room, and yeah. then we'll do our hits. We'll call it First Friday. Yeah. Tune in for one you long four hour segment of Ramon, Kayla, and Will a couple <laughs> times a month. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't wait to play. Uh, I Bert, I'm gonna start to sending see. suggestions. Nah, I would love to see y'all come back here and try to figure out which buttons to hit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Come on, Bert. Don't look at me. It'd be so fun, <laughs> wouldn't it? Will's I'll, good at it. Will can handle it. Yeah, I'll steer that ship. I'm going to figure it out. I've done it. I'm telling you. I it's, did directing back in the it's day. It's either but... that or it's going to short circuit. So, which one you want? You want me back there? Blue goes to break. Honestly, Ramon, I forgot I'm not talking to you. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Good. No, no. Shut he, it down. He is. No, I'm not. But he's not because he laughed strongly. In case you guys didn't know, okay, Bert has an allegiance to a fan base I mean, to a team that's up north, the one the that Derek went to, okay? The Flock. Derek Derek's Henry's new team, yeah. Yes. Uh, and he laughed big time when he celebrated, just lightly. It wasn't nothing crazy about Derek going there. And then there was a later transaction around 12 o'clock that Bert was crying about. And that was Patrick Queen <laughs> to Pittsburgh. <laughs> I ain't going to say crying. It was, we became bigger enemies in that moment <laughs> right there. It's on site. See what I'm saying? And I hadn't seen him face to face yet. So it's like a different feelings, emotions. He, he was on a roller coaster. Yesterday. And then I went to look. I went to look to get my get back. I was like, "Oh yeah, who's their free agent? I, if he gonna steal my girlfriend, I'm gonna steal his girlfriend." Why do all y'all's free agents suck? Y'all ain't got one good free agent, dog. <laughs> good core players, and then the rest of them are role players. Bert, does that go? When to go steal Ramon's girlfriend, I was like, "Dang, what's it? Ain't nothing over here." I mean, you do need a backup quarterback with Tyler Huntley, a free agent. So you go take Mason Rudolph. There you go. Oh, hey. Oh, head wound hair. There we, go. <laughs> there we go. I had uh, one of our teammates from, from Cumulus in general and saw us in the hallway. He was like, he was talking about, man, he loved seeing Derek at Alabama, and I loved him here in Makes Tennessee. Makes one of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, in this, I, I didn't say in this room, yeah, okay? Didn't. I didn't say in this room. He was just like, man, well, at least watching Derek leave is like seeing your favorite wife go. I was like, whoa. Favorite. How many wives did you have? Favorite wife. I was like, oh, oh. Okay, all right. Then. You only need two to have a favorite. Or go up to Utah. They've got plenty up there. Hey, 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 hey. those people Facts. celebrate differently, okay? They got a lot of running backs in Baltimore now. <laughs> Gus Edwards is a Charger. Derrick Henry, a Raven. What are your expectations for Derrick next year in Baltimore? My expectations is uh, I don't expect Baltimore to give him 20-plus reps a game. Mm-hmm. So I think he's going to be a red zone, tight End zone finisher is what I'm calling Derrick Henry up there. One thing you cannot get away is his effectiveness in the tight red zone to just simply get the ball in the end zone. If there is one thing that Baltimore lacked this year, I felt like, was that ability at times to switch it up. Whether you got to give it to Lamar, Lamar miscuing with his wide receivers in those situations. Um, But Derrick, to me, settles the short yardage middle of the field. Um, From 20 to 20, if you got a third and two, he going to get it. Uh, and his his threat of the tight red zone with the pass. I'm be real with you. That is something that's going to always be in his arsenal because you're going to sell out for Derek in the tight red zone. I'm talking about three yards and in. So that's where Baltimore can get more dangerous. Him getting another thousand yards, I don't know because Baltimore is running yeah. back by committee right now. I, I agree with you on that. Here's here's what is amazing to me when I look at Derrick Henry. And you could say tread on the tires if you want. I think that's almost looked at negatively because 
people assume with the amount of carries Derek Scott specifically since 2019. Derek Henry. Uh, Derek Henry, yeah. over 300, uh, almost 380. Then the year even when he got hurt, guys, with the foot, 219. And then back to 349 and 280 last year in terms of workload. That's a lot for a running back because that is what they relied on here in Tennessee. Now you're going to a guy that's 30 years old who still seems like he's healthy. He's doing all his off-season workouts like we see every single off-season. But this is a different type of offense here um, in terms of, like you said, the dual back. And I think they're going to have to use him at this age, too, a little more cautiously. And red zone, bing, bing, bing. That was the main thing why I even said suggesting if you keep him this year with the Titans, he could still be that situational and then that red zone guy. Because, man, that guy racks up the touchdowns. We've got to say that, especially in those red zone situations. So I don't think it will change much from maybe even what we saw this year uh, with the Titans. So I think if anything, though, it's playoffs where he becomes really important. And I think the Ravens know that. Give me a yard number for Derrick Henry next year. Uh, I got about 850. I got 800. I think that's about right. I, I don't think he is the missing piece for them in the playoffs or in a Super Bowl push. It all still falls on Lamar Jackson throwing the football. A, when they're either down like they were against Kansas City. It just comes down to Lamar being Lamar, and maybe this makes Lamar a better version of himself. But how much better does this make Baltimore, in your opinion? How much better? My thing is, and I, I said this to uh, Robert yesterday, Bert. I don't know why I'm calling by his government name. Because <laughs> you guys just are, you know, Christian. Yeah, different Ro- emotions. Yeah, you're right. I, he's no longer Bert to me today. <laughs> he's Robert. This is what I told Robert, too. Um, respectfully, I want to see how Derek goes up against the AFC North. I do. I think that's fair. And that ain't no slight. I don't want you. I, I, I only played in one division. That's true. But I recognize is what other ones are. Also, my my point in saying this is Cleveland's got a monster defense and they're rebuilding it again. Cincinnati had, as of late, has had a really good one. Also, they got a good defensive line when it comes down to stopping it. They breed off of trying to stuff and stop the run as much as possible. Now, I have to go back and look at what each team did against one another in those moments right there. But as far as him getting the ball and understanding um, that you're going to end up see probably a regular box, right? Seven-man box, potentially. Six, seven-man box, potentially. But the the way they attack the run has always been been something that that, 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 that they took pride in. From Pittsburgh to Cincy to Cleveland also. That's where I want to see if Derek shines there, then I'm telling you, Baltimore's on to something. That's what I believe right there. If he can get that ball and just shove it down the throat as much mm-hmm. as possible, then they got something. Um, but I will say this, in a guy that has gone up against Derek and watched other AFC, AFC North teams go up against them, they took it as a challenge. It's like, oh, we got to stop the big guy. And you took a whole lot of pride in it too. So that's where it becomes, I think, a little bit of reality check. Uh-oh, Will got his hands up. No, not news? a big deal. You can finish. Oh, oh no, okay. no, no. I, I was just saying news. I, I was breaking do. news. Yeah. We do have breaking news. Okay. But it's okay. Not, but not it's like a, super urgent. Oh, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> valid points, though. Yeah. Um, What's the breaking news? Former Dolphins linebacker Jerome Baker will visit the Titans on Thursday. There's a linebacker. Hey, there is your inside linebacker. <laughs> All right, hate to interrupt you guys, but uh, Jerome Baker, <laughs> former Dolphins linebacker, visiting the Titans. Big news, linebacker help on the way. Continue with whatever you guys were talking about. Toot I was toot. not listening. That's what I just said. <laughs> oh, that's what you just said? That's oh what I just my, said. That's hilarious. I thought he was joking. I thought that was a whole thing there, a bit. Well, that was great. Word for word, exactly what awesome. I just said. That's okay. Uh, I loved it. No, I'd rather hit it twice than not at all. Hit it? No, we're not doing that. <laughs> Jerome Baker will visit the Titans on Thursday. Baker had 78 tackles, a sack and a half, two interceptions, and three passes defended in 13 games last season. That's what I just said. Didn't I just say he was on a visit to the Titans? That's my bad, Burton. All oh, good. He's a Cleveland, Ohio guy, by the way. He is? Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, I love that. Uh, uh, <laughs> Jerome Baker can't leave uh, Nashville is how I'm looking at that one, though, too. 
can I ask you something real quick if you've ever played with somebody See, like I'll this? See, I'll be doing that too, so you do it. Can I ask I you? Real, well, yep, yes. so, so you do it too. Now he's rubbing <laughs> off on me. Nasty little Wait, Can I ask you real quick? Have you ever played with, you know, so- <laughs> Can I so, ask you? There's yeah, an echo in here. If Derrick Henry, and I don't know if this is the worst. I mean, he kind of expected to be moving on from the Titans, yeah. but... Knowing Derrick Henry and just the competitive guy that he is, he's a different breed, Mm -hmm. too, in the way that he gets motivated for things. Do you feel like this is a situation, too, where you're going to a new team? You know what's happened in the past to former Titans that have left and some haven't had success at the end of their career. Is in any way this a motivating factor? Have you ever been around teammates that have had a similar situation oh yeah uh not even a um a older guy I, I specifically remember emmanuel sanders uh, the conversation between him and ab was the biggest thing and he actually leveraged one of the first players i saw leverage a deal between two teams he committed to pittsburgh denver came right back in and he made denver pay more i've seen that and emmanuel sanders turned into a dude mm-hmm. uh i'm not out on Derek as far as saying he fell off until i actually see it though too I will say there's two different conversations I'm having. I'm saying as far as this offense goes and how he was utilized here, I'd much rather see Derek somewhere else because I feel like this this team, this fan base, deserves a little bit more progressive style of offense. But him going to Baltimore to me, say what you want to about him, and I dislike Baltimore too as a franchise when I played them, but I respect the heck out of what Baltimore does. They have a standard and style of play that you have to respect on the field. That's where I'm at with him in a situation like that. I respect his mindset of saying, I know Baltimore as of late have been good. They're contenders from all the way back to 2000. They have been somewhat steady Steady. of a franchise. And the run game is important to them. Defense is important to them. And stability has been what Baltimore's had as of of late. Two coaches, Robert, three coaches in their career, if I'm not mistaken, so far. That's pretty incredible. That have left this coaching staff? No, no, no. I'm talking stayed. about head coaches. Yeah. Two coaches since Baltimore's been in Baltimore? Uh, three. Three. three That's coaches. crazy. The interesting thing about the Derrick Henry fit is when defenders were not in the box, that didn't necessarily mean they were running the ball against the Chiefs in that AFC title game. So according to ESPN Analytics, when the Chiefs lined up six or fewer defenders in the box, They did it 35 times where they had six or fewer defenders in the box of that AFC title game. You know how many runs Baltimore had against those looks? Two. They lined six or fewer defenders 35 times in the box, and they ran the ball two times because they're playing from behind. behind. Mm -hmm. Derrick Henry makes this offense better. I think he makes Lamar Jackson better. I think Derrick Henry, if he finishes the season healthy and plays 17 games, rushes for 1,000 yards. I'm not willing to bet on him getting to 1,000 yards, though, at the age that he is because of the variable of, is he going to get hurt? How are they going to use him in the red zone? How do they want to use him in different situations? And I have a hard time putting that number at 1,000 yards for a guy who's never played in an offense other than this one that was built around him being successful. This one is going to be built on Lamar Jackson being successful, as it should be. Lamar Jackson's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. But I think the interesting thing about Baltimore is it all comes down to can Lamar accurately throw the ball downfield and can he make the big throws in the biggest moments? And then when Lamar gets his ring, does Cheyenne <laughs> oh. for Bird? Uh, you, you're one step closer now. I, don't, I hope you know that. Yesterday she was trying to get me to buy a Derrick Henry jersey, and I was like, hold on, we, we don't do that yet. <laughs> well, the Houston Oilers <laughs> Derrick Henry jersey's probably just got a lot – more affordable. Oh not my color, not my shade. Uh, uh, but I did have some stats for you guys yeah. for uh, Lamar when he faces stack boxes. So we all know when Derrick Henry was here, Tennessee faced stack boxes uh, at the, the highest rate in the NFL, higher than any other team. Uh, at Warren Sharp, uh, Sharp Football, if you guys are unfamiliar, does really good stuff on Twitter. Uh, Lamar, he put these stats out last night. Lamar versus seven-man boxes last year. He is number one in dropback, number one in success rate, number three in completion rate, and number four in yards per average. If if they stack the box again, they are just giving Lamar one-on-ones on the outside to allow him to continue to, to develop as a passer. Uh, another stat I saw last night, Derrick Henry in his career on average uh, when running through the offensive line gained 1.3 yards before contact. Baltimore running backs over that same time period gained 1.8 yards before contact. 
they're just going to give him that little extra push, the little extra impetus to gain uh, the the momentum he needs to get those yards. And I, I think I think Will is spot on. I think what you can expect from him is the the Gus Edwards. Uh, role last year he was two carries shy of 200 finished with 810 yards 13 touchdowns 4.1 yards a carry that's the blueprint if if he gets 200 carries he probably ends up somewhere around 800 yards i don't expect him yeah. to blow anybody's socks off and, and finish with with something massive like a jamal charles five and a half you know what i right. mean it, it's it's going to be about opportunity and that's where derrick henry's yards are going to come from so with that where I, where I think a guy like derrick can be utilized properly with a team like Baltimore that's run heavy too is if Derek develops more of the screen game, more of the passing game. Because you expect Derek to run, you Which expect always, Baltimore yeah, to do he's it. He's been working but on that. Collectively, between J.K. Dobbins all the way down to Gus Edwards last year, there was 540 passing yards to the, the running backs. Now, the majority of the, the of the passing game, I feel like, goes to the tight ends when we're talking about Baltimore because they got some really unique yeah. ones. Okay, Likely's real good. Mark Andrews really good. But if you want to really specialize in making Derek a weapon, to me and just the running backs in general when it comes to Baltimore, make that uh, that outlet pass to Derek more often. That screen game where they're getting upfield and it's not because we've seen Derek go make big yards from screen games here in Nashville. He's capable of catching and running. It's yeah. a matter of where you throwing it to with him. I don't think he's a down the field, you know, running a slant type of dude. But we're talking about getting to the hashes. Oh, Derek can do that. Yeah, that's something Derek continuously worked on throughout the last few seasons. And look, it, it never was natural for him, but he he made it happen for the most part. Like he could be incorporated in that way as your point being made there, Ramon. Um, I think it's it's interesting in terms of just the fit for me in Baltimore too. Um, it'll be interesting to see how Derek feels behind a line that is actually comparable. Yeah. No, because, no, just say that. I mean, that's I mean, got to be, that's, that's that's gotta be yeah, a luxury that, this season for him. Lie. Yeah. I mean, just the amount of work that probably he had to do with the lack of that in front of him last year. So to that point, though, I have to ask this question because we saw it a little bit, I think, uh, in one or two games this year. But can he go play bully ball, too? Mm -hmm. That's the question I have for Derek going to that division. Can he go up there and play bully ball and watch and just run into, like Marshawn Lynch say, yep. run into somebody's face play after play until they submit? 615-737-1045 is our number. Will you root for Derrick Henry to win a Super Bowl as a Baltimore Raven? We can get your thoughts on that. We can also take a look at the newest potential target for the Titans on defense. Titans are swinging big for some stars on the defensive side of the ball. We've got news on the linebacker that will be visiting Nashville tomorrow next. Hey, it's Will Bowling. Do you or someone close to you find it maddening to hear conversation when there's background noise? Maybe it's while dining at your favorite restaurant. You're in a crowded room. There's not a lot of space. There's a lot of conversation going on around you. You're having trouble understanding what the person across from you is saying. Well, if so, I want to introduce you to my friends at Brentwood Hearing Center, whether it's you or whether it's a relative you have, because let's be honest, we've all got them who might fit into this category. With five doctors of audiology, state-of-the-art diagnostic equipment, and the most recent hearing device technology, they're going to get you off the sidelines and back of the game. With over 85 years of experience from their location right off I-65 in Brentwood, they're going to learn where you spend most of your time, find out what your work environment is, where you're having the most trouble hearing clear conversation, and they're going to give you a hearing solution to your needs. Give them a call today, 615-377-0420, or visit them online at Brentwood Hearing Center. Dot com. Let the mania be on the hardwood this March. 615-377-0420. That's Brentwood Hearing Center. Better hearing, better life.
All right, KW, Ramon, Kayla, and Will is brewed by 8th and Roast. We've got news on a linebacker visiting the Titans. And coming up in just a few minutes, the latest on the Titans swinging big for a pair of defensive stars in the secondary and one more on the defensive line. We'll get Ramon's and Kayla's takes, plus yours, on the phone lines at 615 737 one Oh four five. We've asked on Twitter. Will you cheer for Derek Henry to win a super bowl in Baltimore at Ramon Kayla will, where you can chime in, vote there, give your thoughts. Alex has shared quite a soliloquy for us in return. He says there is absolutely nothing that could ever convince me to cheer for those filthy rat birds. Jesus Christ himself could come down from on high for the rapture wearing Ravens gear. And I'd pass on the invitation. Ooh. That is Alex on Twitter. Well done, Alex. Look at that. That uh, Bucket says, I'd much rather drive a nail through my thumb than cheer on a raven to win a Super Bowl. Ouch. Do it then. Someone else said, I would rather take a punch from Mike Tyson. Oh, Are boy. you one of the Paul brothers? I was going to say. Let's go to Mike in Cleveland. Oh, my. Always entertaining. What's up, Mike? What's up, Mike? There it is. We've there missed it. There's the horn. There you go. Hey, there you go, there you go. Hey, yo, I, I don't know if y'all heard, but uh, Dolphins linebacker, Jerome Baker, he's making a visit to Tennessee. Oh, no way. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, damn. This is y'all didn't hear that news, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, he's from right up there in Cleveland, too, there. You like the tune, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yo, uh, with the Henry, I'm not I'm not as dramatic. Maybe a couple years ago I would have been. But, you know, because of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, I'm not as dramatic about it. I'm not about to sit here and root for, uh, you know, the Ravens. But if Henry's there, then in the Super Bowl, if that happens, that happens. I'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I still don't. It's hard. I still don't know if I'm going to root for him to to make it to make it there. But if he makes it there, then kudos to you, big dog. I appreciate all all and everything that you did for uh, you know my squad when you was here there in Tennessee. You know what I mean? That's how I look at it. But I do want to say, Will, once again, I agree with you, my brother. Thank you. I think this uh, makes yeah, yeah, for sure, man. You 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 do all right sometimes. You do all right. Well, you're not cutting up people's jeans. You you okay? But um, True. <laughs> I do agree with you that uh, this makes Lamar better, and I also think that uh, Henry, uh, you know, in that offense with him uh, protects him some. You know, it takes some of that some of that uh, punishment that he was taking. You know, trying to run the ball, trying to pick the team up, and everything. I think it takes it. Uh, you know, helps protect him take some of that beat, you know, that beat down off of him that he was taking sometimes. And also, uh, I mean, it's Henry. He get, you know, we saw Lamar had a down game, put the ball in Henry's hand, and maybe he uh, can pick pick the whole squad up and, and put the team on his back like he did for us. So, I mean, all around, you know, kudos to Henry. And, uh, yeah, man, we got to keep this thing rolling and going. Tighten up, baby. No Go. doubt. Love it. Nice. Thank you, Mike. You must not have any new music coming out. No, I, I was know, just going to tell y'all. It. I heard a track. Well, he will did? call back his, in. His if, newest is it one. Good? <laughs> I will not lie. For a gospel rapper, cool. Mike is rapping his tail off. Hallelujah. I like it. I'm Mike not job. even joking. That's sweet. Like, if it was trash, I'll yeah. tell y'all, Mike, this is <laughs> no, you weak would. sauce. This is weak sauce. I'm going to be real with you. Uh, Mike, solid. again, uh, I don't know if Mike had heard, but Jerome Baker, Dolphins linebacker, is going to visit oh the Titans God. tomorrow. This is our bit that we're doing today. Uh, PFF's breakdown of the Dolphins inside linebacker. Baker will get caught on blocks at times or fail to enthusiastically fill a gap in the run game, but he's still one of the stronger coverage linebackers of the NFL with the long speed and effort to chase down ball carriers. On the play where he injured his wrist, which required surgery and may have spurred his release, he ran across the field to the far pylon and was just a second late to making a potential stop right before the touchdown. That, to me, sounds like a perfect fit next to your new inside linebacker. Kenneth Walker. Well, and he had the sprained... Murray, K- Murray. Kenneth, uh, He had the sprained wrist, and then earlier he had a sprained a- a MCL. I guess he ran into his own teammate, or his teammate ran into him. So he had two injuries that I think maybe were a reason why the Dolphins decided uh, let's part ways. And I'm not saying those are injuries that are going to be lingering. Those are almost freak injuries. He's been pretty much healthy his whole career. 
while with the Miami Dolphins. I actually covered him two years at Ohio State, and I just realized it. And he was really a great player there and a great leader. And that's what he's been with the Dolphins and wearing the green dot. I think it's important that we don't have an Aziz Al Shire here. Then, you know, who's going to fill that spot? Who's Who's got the intelligence to do that? Who's got the leadership to do it? It looks like Jerome is that guy. And he was a Walter Payton man of the year also, you guys. But I just think his game, what he's able to do, um, you want that physical guy. I feel like he is that. If he can stay healthy, which it seems, again, like these were just kind of freak accidents in terms of injuries, I think this would be a huge home run for the Titans. He was due $14 million and was unwilling to redo his deal as well right. in Miami. So that, that, as much as anything, why he is available. Yeah, I, I like what, what could be the yin and yang of him and uh, Kenneth Murray. I think that is super unique right there. You got a guy that's good side to side. And, again, I said this about Kenneth Murray. I'll see. I'm not 100% right on every doggone thing. But if you got a thumper and Kenneth Murray and you got a guy that can cover and Jerome Baker, you I mean, that changes the entire dynamic of this, this defense to me because if you can go side to side, up the middle, not have to rely on bringing safeties into the box, I mean, you you win right there, especially I'm looking for one more big. I am defensively. I agree with you, Ramon. I think they need it. Coming up, the Titans have been linked with three stars on the defensive side of the football who will not be cheap. Which one is most important for Rand Carthon to add? As Hour 2 begins next. It's Ramon Foster for Secure Line. I'm here to tell you, whether you're living in Williamson County, Sumner County, Wilson County, Davidson, wherever, Rutherford County, they can come to you and provide their prime service to you. And that's why I got on my prime sunglasses right now. Okay, shout out to my man, Marcus Secure Line. I'm here to tell you, man, right now, a lot is changing in Middle Tennessee as far as your yard care goes. A lot of big companies are coming in and buying your local businesses. But I'm here to tell you, you don't have to worry about that with Secure Line. They are here one to be here and they are not changing what they do when you sign up with them or no there's no contract what am i talking about when you uh, commit to have them service your yard what you will get is quality your tech will always be there they will not try to squeeze you into a schedule they will make a schedule for you your yard care will not be like your neighbor's yard care that's what i'm here to tell you so if you want the best product and the best service for a local company here in middle tennessee that's been here for over 25 years i'm here to tell you this Go to securelawn.com or you can simply call them at 615-893-8455 and please be sure to tell them that Ramon sent you.
What's going on, you bunch of legal tamperers? Not no more. New league year starts today at 3 o'clock. All teams must be cap compliant. But we'll talk about the deals that got done because the Titans were burning the midnight oil once again, signing former commander's guard Sadiq Charles, the former fourth-round pick from LSU, also former teammates with Titans' new center Lloyd Cushenberry. Started 18 games over four years in Washington. Some more clay for Bill Callahan to mold on the offensive line. Titans also doing their diligence on former number one overall pick Chase Young. Young visiting Tennessee after visiting New Orleans and Carolina earlier in the week. Young set career highs in sacks, quarterback hits, and pressures this year with the Commanders and in the second half of the season with the 49ers. And the final running back domino to fall fell yesterday as Derrick Henry signed a two-year $16 million deal worth up $20 million with $9 million guaranteed. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and the Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. Seven a.m. in Nashville and a beautiful morning to start your day right here on Ramon, Kayla, and Will. RKW is brewed by Eighth and Roast. The phone number is six one five seven three seven one zero four five. And in twenty minutes, former NFL general manager Michael Lombardi will join us. We'll ask him what he likes the most about what the Titans have done so far in free agency, and if he's willing to give up a third round pick for Chiefs corner Legarius. Sneed. If you listen to the Buck Rising show yesterday, you know the Titans are very much in on the Kansas City corner. Justin Simmons, former Broncos safety, another man who is wanted by Rand Carthon. And Chase Young, former commander and 49er, scheduling a visit with the Titans as well. Ramon Foster, Kayla Anderson, Robert Walsh, our producer. I'm Will Bowling. Who is the priority of those three that you feel like the Titans should be most aggressive to add. Chase Young, Justin Simmons, or Legereus Neat? Uh, I like the Chase Young one. Ooh. Why's that? I've been a Chase Young fan. I'm going to be real with y'all. I've, I've liked him for a while. I think whatever happened in Washington, him with the ACL and, and how he needed to bounce back and did, and then you trade for him, there is high value there for me for a guy like Chase Young. And you can never have enough rushers when it comes to getting after the quarterbacks. If we're talking about directly um, taming, we're talking about directly taming quarterbacks and getting after them and getting them off the spot, Chase Young – has been proven to be able to do that. I don't view him as a bust. I think it's super unfortunate that he had the ACL injury. And in this league, you go after guys that can get after the quarterback directly, and he's been one of them too. Uh, you and, and and here's the other side of this too. Art Arden Key, I got to look at his PFF stats and stuff like that. His ability, yes, Kayla just waved right there. He rides a wave. It goes up, it goes down. I don't know if you want to call it a roller coaster or not, but he has a lot of energy to get – and commit to plays, but the production hasn't been there, or at least the counterproduction of somebody else succeeding off of it. So I will submit a challenge to him, like, hey, let's get home. He is a physical freak when it comes down to what Arden Key's capable of. But you know what you do in situations like that? You always looking to upgrade or make it better or make it stronger. And I think that's what a guy like Chase Young. But I would absolutely, though, Will, to that same point, I would not let Jerome Becker get out of Nashville. So if you're adding Jerome Baker as a fourth player into that option, he becomes the priority at inside linebacker. Yeah. Kayla, what do you think? I mean, yeah, that inside linebacker, this has been something that's quietly been addressed in a way and because it doesn't seem like it's always the main, the cornerback, the wide receiver. But Ramon has been on the linebacker position for a minute now and how it is important to – uh, up that position, especially now that um, Aziz is gone. So, yeah, I think that's priority. But then I look at, okay, who can be there with uh, Monty Hooker? And I really like Justin Simmons. I really like the, like, 
stability, consistency that he's provided uh, to the Denver Broncos since 2016. Yes, he's 30 years old. And you can look at the whole Kevin Byard situation and, well, he's Kevin Byard's age and look what happened to Kevin Byard. But look at his production in the last three years. Um, I mean, it's been pretty consistent in terms of the amount of games he's played. He had three INTs last year. Um, I, I feel like this is a guy that would compliment Amani. It, it's a good older player. Amani's still in his prime as well um, in terms of that secondary having good leadership. This would be huge. And I still think he's play, He's a playmaker. He still has the ability to make plays. Diana Rossini tweeting last night, the Titans are targeting all pro safety Justin Simmons, adding the Titans were hoping to get a shot at C.J. Garner-Johnson, but Philly scooped him up. Adam Kaplan, uh, Pro Football Network writer, essentially put on Twitter last night in retweeting Buck Rising's A to Z Sports primetime show that the Titans thought they were getting Garner-Johnson, and now they are pivoting to a very different style of player in Justin Simmons. I think it's interesting. That is a weird fit to me in Simmons. At this point in his career, at your thir- in your 30s, I'm surprised that he would realistically look at the Titans as an option for him. Because, honestly, this team is not in a Super Bowl window in 2024. I would expect him to go elsewhere that is going to give him a better chance to win a Super Bowl. But if Rand Carthon and the Titans feel like they can give him the best value and they can overpay to convince him to be here, then absolutely. I'm all in on that. I, I'm with you except on the overpay pay part. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Be, because the thing to me is there has to be balance. to it. you don't want to just go get players, especially how old is Justin Simmons? He's 30, 30 at right now at 30. You just got rid of a 30 year old safety when it comes down to buyer. I wouldn't overpay for a guy like him. I right. would want him to be here. That's where we're, we're the conversation of people wanting to be into and be in Nashville. Yeah. Uh, and, and winning comes with that, right? And you look at yourself and say, this this division is primed to be taken at some point. As strong as Houston has gotten, you still are in the arms race with them if you do get a guy like him, if you do go get an outside edge rusher and a linebacker. If we believe in what Will Levis is capable of offensively and whatever happens in the draft as far as offensive weapons, I think you got a shot to compete in the South. And if you're competing in the South, you at least say – if you're competing in yourself, you're at least saying to yourself, we get a shot at the playoffs if you, you win the, if you win the division. And I think that's still a toss-up. Houston won it last year, but Houston had the ball bounce in the right direction for a lot of the times. The way Jacksonville crumbled cannot be mistaken. We look at what happened in Indiana, too, when it comes down to the quarterback play. They lost their guy, and it was a toss-up. If we're being honest with it, if, ten, if the Titans had got their stuff together, they could have been in that AFC South race to actually compete for it, but it just didn't happen because you switched out uh, Ryan Tannehill, you started a rookie quarterback, and you had a lack of weapons. This division is not out of the hands of saying we can't go win it next year or we can't compete yeah. for the AFC South. Houston has shown that they are good. But when it boils down to saying there's still opportunity to get into the playoffs, that's all you're asking. There's only one champion each year anyway. So, And all you want is a knock at the door to get yourself into the playoffs is where I am as far as Justin Simmons coming here instead of saying, okay, go chase the ring. He can, I mean, well, Kansas, where is he going? Kansas City, Baltimore? Well, well, well no. that's yeah, that's the thing. First of all, they don't they and don't necessarily they don't necessarily want him. They might necessarily not want that thirty year old at that point. Although that's on his mind, he probably wants to get a ring. That's not always how the business works out. And guess what? The other place where he's supposedly getting interest from is another AFC South team. Dustin Adams, a Colts beat writer, is saying the Colts have interest in him. So it just seems like wherever the interest is, is you got to go. The more he visits people, the higher their price goes. I wouldn't, I wouldn't outprice myself on that one. No, I wouldn't outprice. You're right. I, I'd, I'd do it for a, a decent price, though. What's a decent price? What would you pay for Justin Simmons? <sighs> I can't give you that number. I, I don't know what his market is going to be. Yeah, I ain't got it, that I, number. Well, I'd, I'll be completely honest with you. I threw something out there. I could say, what am I giving him for safety? If I say eight, is that too much for Justin Simmons? He, his salary cap charge for 2024 was going to be 18.25. So his release okay. saves Denver $14.5 million total against the salary cap. He's going to cost quite a, a, a bit. Yeah. 
Two-time Pro Bowl selection. He is the only player in the NFL with multiple picks every year since he entered the league in 2016. That is an active streak of eight straight seasons. That's pretty impressive. You're going to have to overpay for one of these guys because of the markets they have. When guys like this start doing visits, Chase Young is going to take a visit to the Titans. Jerome Baker is going to take a visit here to Nashville. Legereus Sneed is coming off of a career season where he was locking down people all year in Kansas City. It's not a bad thing to overpay based on 2024 because you do have a premium amount of money. You overpay on the front end, and that way you get small salary cap charges on the back end, and you always stay ahead of the cap, and you always go into free agency with a quarterback and a rookie contract with quite a bit of change in your pocket. I feel like a lot has changed uh, from the firing to now. Um, of Rabel. Of, of the okay. firing of Rabel till now. Because I feel like every everybody in this offseason, including myself, have been saying, okay, this is a two, three-year build. Like, this is over time. And and I feel like as of late, because of the ability to have so, so much money in with the cap and the changes of the coaches and the coaches that you hired and brought in, that you feel like the co- – you can be very competitive right now. And I feel like this aggressiveness is because of the coaching staff, the amount of money you have, and we're not thinking about the two, three-year run that you're that this going to take to replenish and build this team back up. Has it changed for you guys too as of late? Yeah, a little bit. Because we're talking about players that we have to have right now. And I'm thinking to myself, as far as overspending, like going to get a Justin Simmons I think will be overspending when we said this was a two- to three-year deal as far as rebuilding it back up. I don't want to get over our skis and just saying, we won't, we won't, we won't. Yeah. So I'm going to bring myself back a little bit. I'd rather pay somebody else. But I get the idea of saying, it's okay to go get a guy like Justin Simmons if we feel like we can compete. But I also say, this is a time. Mm -hmm. We got to have a time lapse in getting this rebuilt up. And Justin Simmons is 30. Where is he going to look like at 32, 33, 34? Right. And and look, you can't fill every position perfectly, right? You can't fill every position with a 27-year-old, a 25-year-old. That's why if I'm going to pay money, I probably would pay money and give a bag to a guy like Jerome Baker. Like that, that's he he's still in his prime. That's an important position of need. Yes, I would pick him in terms of giving the money over a Justin Simmons, but I like what Justin Simmons would bring to the table if you're able to give him a two-year deal, which is somewhat decent. Maybe you're not you're not throwing out all the money. We'll see right. where that market is and how it goes because there was a plethora of safeties in this free agency draft too. There's a lot of them. Um, but what I would say really quick is just in terms of how quickly they can rebuild – you never know in this day and age, right? Because if you do have everybody on the same page, which it looks like the Titans have from top to bottom, and the ads that we've seen for the most part are good. The one thing I'll say, though, it just always will come back to your quarterback. And Will Levis has got to take a jump next year. Yeah, it's why I, I originally said just between Snead, Simmons, and Young, because Jerome Baker, I think, is the number one priority. Okay. Considering the needs you have a linebacker. It's what? why I... The, the question was what the most important between Snead, yeah. Simmons, and Young. I think you could young. go any of those three are are important. I wouldn't but, be mad. Um, interesting. The uh, There are still a lot of teams in this. Uh, I know re- the reporting last night from a number of folks were that the Titans were doing their dil- due diligence and were still in the mix but uh, for Legereus Snead specifically, but that does not necessarily mean he's uh, getting his jersey size yet, picking out his number. <laughs> mm-hmm. Coming up next, we'll bring former NFL GM Michael Lombardi into the conversation. Are the Titans in a position to make a trade with a future pick for Legereus Sneed? And is that realistic? He'll tell us next. Hey, what's going on? It's Will Bowling here for my friends at Lee Company. Put Lee Company on your team and stay ahead of the game with home maintenance, repairs, and more. For $12 per month, you can sign up for the Lee Company home maintenance plan and receive four visits to your home every year by an experienced technician. Let the Lee Company professionals keep your air conditioning, heating, plumbing, and electrical systems in tip-top shape. you got to get the best players on your team today. 
So learn more at LeadCompany.com or give them a call at 615-567-1000. They've got over 80 years of experience. They're open 24-7 with 14 community locations in Tennessee, Kentucky, and Alabama. Lee Company is here to help. So put Lee Company on your team and stay ahead of the game with home maintenance repairs and more. For $12 a month, sign up for the Lee Company home maintenance plan at 615-567-1000. Online at LeeCompany.com. That's Lee Company. All you need. It's Ramon Foster for Hill of Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Man, this month is Happy Golden Ticket Sweepstakes, where you can win a lot of Hiller right now. You can enter to win at HillerGoldenTicket.com, and all you got to do is enter your email, and you automatically enter to win. Prizes include a 5000 yes, five grand Hiller gift card. You can also get a $1,000 Hiller gift card or will be one of the 10 Happy Hiller Club memberships that they're passing out also, which is super clutch when it comes down to getting your HVAC service and just small issues around your house that you may have. You can also take advantage of zero interest financing for 48 months on select new HVAC systems or 36 months on tankless water heaters and whole home generators. Please don't miss out on this. Enter to win now at HillerGoldenTicket.com.
RKW is brewed by 8th and Rose to 104.5 The Zone. Ramon, Kayla, and Will with our NFL veteran, Ramon Foster, Kayla Anderson, Robert Walsh, our producer. I'm Will Bowling. And joining us right now with lots to discuss in the National Football League, he is former NFL general manager, Michael Lombardi, kind enough to give us a couple of minutes this morning. Good morning, Michael. How are you? Uh, I am great. Thank you. How are you guys? We're good. We're good. Uh, Just a little bit to talk about here with lots of money going around, specifically in Nashville and with Derrick Henry becoming a Baltimore Raven. Let's start, though, with what the Titans have added and the moves they have made. Michael, what do you like the most about the Titans strategy and free agency so far? Well, I mean, they obviously have to repair the offensive line, which was a disaster last year. I think Cushenberry, uh, you know, will help. I think really the bigger help that they got was Bill Callahan, their line coach. I think he's going to be able to take players and kind of make them better as they move forward. Obviously, they signed Charles to a one-year deal. I mean, this is going to be a work in progress. But until they can really uh, get this line fixed, it's going to be hard to evaluate Levis and the others. But what they've done is, is look, when, when you have Derrick Henry, you are committed to running the football. You're committed to kind of the outside zone. You you are an offense defined by him. And I think what you see now with the shift to Tony Pollard and with Spears, I think they're going to be more of a space team, try to throw the ball a little bit, spread people out, and not be committed to – feeding the ball to one back. And Michael, it's interesting when you look at what the Texans have done to Neil Hunter, to Nico Autry, Aziz Al Shire, who we know here well, and the beef on that defensive line now, how much as a GM do you look around your division and say, as much as they've added, now we have to go make corresponding moves and make our offensive line even better, perhaps? Well, you know, I mean, look, if you you can't win, if you can't win your division, you can't get to the, it's hard to get to the playoffs. And I think at the end of the day, Houston's front is going to be similar to what San Francisco built, right? That's the way D'Amico learned how to play. It's all bet predicated on the front. They put a lot of money in. You know, they lose Greenhart, who was a really good player, but they're able to get back uh, Hunter. They were able to sign uh, Autry, another defensive tackle, to go inside with their front. I mean, you could just see where all they're, they're putting their resources is, is the defensive front, which is kind of the same thing that the, that the – uh, that the San Francisco 49ers have done. So I, I think, look, that's the number one challenge. You're not winning any games if you can't protect. What I've always said is, you know, bad offensive lines don't travel well. And when you have a bad line, it's hard to win games on the road. It's hard to play effectively offensively when your offensive line is constantly breaking down, when you don't have the players that you need to have at, whether it's at left tackle, right tackle, it doesn't really matter, you know? And so I think that's the number one job Rand Carthon's got to do is fix that line. Michael Lombardi, a former NFL GM. You can also catch his podcast, GM Shuffle Podcast, a great one to listen to. Michael, on the note then of offensive line, because you're right, it can't just be fixed in one sweep of free agency. So the big question with the Titans has been, what are you going to do at number seven if you've got an alt there, if you've got a fashion nude there? Do you believe they have to take a tackle if he is at that spot? Well, I think you got to take something you can't buy, right, Kayla? You got to take something that you can't buy in free agency. You can't buy tackles in free agency. There's none out there, right? It's hard to find them. You can't find three techniques in free agency, although this year Christian Wilkins was out there, but typically they never make it. Uh, it's hard. To, so the draft, especially in the top 10, is you got to be able to draft positions you can't buy. And I think that really fits into what Tennessee needs to do. They need to be able to get that offensive line fixed. And if there's a tackle that they like, they need to pick them. And they need to build around the line. Look, you know, everybody gave Detroit – why is Detroit so good? Well, you know, they have Goff or they have – you know, they have Gibbs and they have Montgomery. No, no, they're good because they, they pick Penny Sue, even though they had Decker – they rebuilt that offensive line. That offensive line has been the key to their success in Detroit, and I think that's ultimately that's the program you want to try to model yourself after. Football's never going to change, right? It's always going to be about who can block the best and who can pr- get protect the quarterback. And when you have a team that can't do that, all of a sudden you're prone to losing. So I, I think that's the game. I mean, football, the winning game, winning teams in the league don't change. They have great quarterbacking play and both their offensive and defensive lines. For all we talk about, well, you got to get a number one receiver, you have to do this. If you don't have an offensive line, it's hard to get the ball to anybody. 
Speaking of that wide receiver position, we have not seen the Titans make a move yet in free agency. Uh, While they need to add to that room with DeAndre Hopkins, Traylon Burks has just not performed up to his level uh, for being a first-round pick to this point at least. Do you feel like the wide receivers in the draft are deep enough where you just go and get yours there, or do you got to add one in free agency too if you're the Titans? Well, I think you can look look at the Packers. I mean, they haven't spent a first round pick on a wide receiver, and they've got a lot of good young talent at receiver. There's receivers available. What I just said about you have to draft what you can't find. You can find receivers in the second round. I mean, whether it's Samuel, whether it's you know AJ Brown, who they found in the, in the second round. I mean, there's guys out there that you can find that fit what you want to do. And, and I feel pretty comfortable they'll be able to do it. Now, look, you know, Brian Callahan was in Cincinnati when they drafted Jamar Chase. They stood, you know, they, they needed a left tackle. They took Chase. Chase is a good player. They had T. Higgins there. But I, I think they'll find him. I think for, for any quarterback to be correctly evaluated, the line's got to come through. You know, the quarterback makes – everybody thinks the receivers make the quarterback, right? No, the quarterback makes the receivers. So if the quarterback's playing great – I mean, Brady won Super Bowls with receivers that nobody can really mention. The one year that he had a great receiver, Randy Moss, they didn't win the Super Bowl. So I think you got to be able to find the – get the quarterback protected, let him run, and all of a sudden your receivers start to look a lot better. Michael Lombardi with us this morning. Mike, I have to ask you, uh, when it comes down to the wide receivers, we've seen that price go up and up and up, except for this offseason. Is this the reset in free agency as far as free agent wide receivers that the NFL needed or wanted to, or is this just unintentional consequences? I, I think it's kind of interesting. You know, I thought Mike Evans would go for more than what he went for. I think teams are, like, going to take the same approach. You know, why am I paying all this money for a, you know, this the most overused term in the National Football League by media, by everybody, is a number one receiver. Like, those are not, the, the, they're not common. Like, the, you know, not every team has a number one receiver. They might have the best receiver on their team. But a number one receiver means you got to double them on every single play. But like, you don't have anybody who could cover them. Tyree kills the number one receiver, right? You can't cover him with one person. So, like, it's hard to find those guys. And so I think when you overpay for what is essentially a second receiver, you're sitting there saying, wait a minute, I could probably draft this and get the same type of guy, maybe not as good, maybe a little bit better, for a lot less money. And I think that's what's happened in the league. I think people are starting to come to that conclusion. Now, look, Jacksonville signed Gabe Davis. They signed DuVernay. You know, and and they may just sign Calvin Ridley back. Like, I don't know how they're going to get the ball to everybody. But to me, you know, when you build around the receivers, Bill Walsh used to say this all the time, the receiver position is the one position you should fix when the rest of your team is perfect. Because if you don't have it like the Raiders, the Raiders can't get the ball to Devontae Adams because they don't have a quarterback. So what good does Devontae Adams do so true mm-hmm. right there. <laughs> wow. On, on the other side, of speaking of the quarterback that can't protect him, we have seen as of late an uptick in centers and guards. And me, myself, being a former guard, I'm proud of this, okay, Michael? But when it, when, it, when it comes to the prices that are paid, do you think teams now are recognizing that defensive coordinators have recruited, have scouted, have picked guys in the draft that says our quickest way to the quarterback is through the interior, and that's why we're seeing an uptick in uh, interior offensive line salaries. Look, I, I've been saying this for years. I wrote about it in Gridiron Genius. I, I've written it in Football Done Right. That No one talks about the paint. You know, we talk about the paint in basketball. The paint in football is from the outside shoulders of the one guard, the right guard, to the outside shoulder of the left guard. And if you don't get somebody to stand in front of the quarterback in the paint, you're never going to stop a good quarterback. All these guys that rush past the quarterback, you know, uh, you know, they run up the field and they're five yards past the quarterback. That, that's exactly what they want. But when a quarterback can't step up vertically in the pocket, can't work the pocket, then it becomes a real problem. And so if you can't protect inside out, if you can't handle that, then your quarterback's not going to be effective. And I think we see that oftentimes. I mean, that's why 
we're seeing an uptick. You know, back in the 70s, the league was filled with a lot of great defensive tackles, whether it was Merlin Olsen, Bob Lilly. You know, you can go through them all. And then we kind of lost a little bit of that, and now we're back to it again. I mean, we see Wilkins got a huge deal. You, Tennessee has an elite three technique in Jeffrey Simmons who disrupts the game. And he disrupts the game not because he records double-digit sacks every year, but because he is in the quarterback's face. And that's more problematic than a sack, right? What you want to be able to do on defense is get the ball to come out quicker, is to make the quarterback have to play faster. And it's hard to do that if you don't have an inside rusher getting in the paint. Great point right there. The the other side of this, too, is I, I have to just bring up the fact that Bill Callahan is here, and you said that also. How much can a coach mean to a, a group like this offensive line that they've had here and had their issues? Are you, or are you the type of GM that believe that your coaches can get the best out of a position that was somewhat lacking the year before if you had to make a change? And it's been wildly reported that Bill Callahan is one of the best. So for a guy like Andre Diller, a Daniel Bronsko, or just even a young first rounder in Peter Skaronsky, what can a good coach do for the guys that you have inside of your room if you choose not to move on from them? Well, I, I think the offensive line coach is one of the most valuable coaches in the league. I, I think that they're probably mostly all underpaid because as an executive, if you can get a young player who you draft in the third or fourth round to be a starting guard, center, or even a tackle, you get four years at really cheap value. And that coach, if he develops them, is worth his weight in gold. So, and I've worked with Bill. I was with Philadelphia with Bill when he put together, you know, a line, and he'll get the most out of the players. I was with him in Oakland uh, when we were able to build a really good line. He took a college free agent named Barry Sims and turned him into a left tackle. And then what he did in Cleveland last year. I mean, look at Cleveland. They lost their two starting tackles. They lost their guards. And yet he put guys in there, and they were able to function. So I think they're worth their weight in gold. And you certainly have to have better players. But he'll take the, he'll get the most out of those players. It's a huge hire for Tennessee to get that because there's very few guys that change the trajectory of an organization like an off, a great offensive line coach. Look at Philadelphia. You know that's one of the things they've been able to do. That you know Philly's changed head coaches twice, but they haven't changed their offensive line coach. There's a reason for that because those guys are really valuable and they are probably more uh, geared towards helping an offensive win than anybody. Michael Labardi, former NFL GM, with us. Check out the GM Shuffle podcast wherever you download podcasts. Michael, with talks of Legereus Sneed being out there and the Titans being one of the five or six teams in the mix, does that move make sense for the Titans to give up a third or fourth round pick in 2025 or even in 2024? Should they be in the market for his services? Well, you know, he's a, he's a good man-to-man corner, and if they're going to play man-to-man, they certainly need somebody like that, right? But I think, to me, you have to weigh what is the balance between what – you see, everybody just talks about what you have to give up, right? But but this is going to be a very expensive cap deal. Brian Burns just went for a two and a five, and then they paid him an astronomical amount of money. Great for Brian Burns. But to me, as a defensive edge guy, so I think you got to weigh the balance because if you sign Snead and you pay him what he wants, then you have to look at your cap and say, okay – Like, what are we losing if we sign them? What do we gain if we sign them? I think, to me, there's two questions to always ask is when it comes to free agency is, is the player going to help us and is does the contract hurt us? And when you can answer those two effectively, then you should make the move. Michael Lombardi joining us now, former NFL GM. I want to go back to the quarterback uh, talk. And I'm curious as your thoughts on Will Levis after this last season where he made his debut and where he looks to be the guy moving forward. But like you said, before you add these other pieces around them, you have to make sure that's your quarterback. What do you need to see from him moving forward? I thought he was really inconsistent. I thought he was, you know, a very unpredictable. I think when you look at his third down tape, I, I think there were some good plays and there was a lot of bad plays. And I, I think he was kind of frustrating his accuracy with the football, his rhythm, his timing. You know, he was a guy that, you know, I was trained by Bill Wall. So, you know, everything for me when watching a quarterback is what does his feet, how is his feet and his arm tied together? You know, and Will's feet and arm were never really tied together. He was all over the place. This is going to be a work in progress for Brian Callahan. 
And, you know, you've got to be able to ask yourself the question, is he going to be good enough to, to keep developing? Because they're going to ignore the quarterback position because they feel like he can do those things. Now, I haven't seen practice tape or see how he is. You know, I know he's a big guy, can move all around. I worry about his anticipation and his accuracy. And as the game speeds up, right, you know, as you're looking at the game and you're watching him and you're seeing, okay, you know, it starts now, it's third down, what are we doing? You know, how how's it going? Is he holding the ball? Can he anticipate throws? I think those are always the things that you worry about, right? You know, and he's, you know, last year it, he struggled. He had too many bad throws, you know, almost 17% of his throws were bad. And, you know, that's a hard thing to do. It's if you can't control the football. Brett Favre used to say this, and I think it's really true. Every quarterback in the league can throw the ball through a door. Some of them can hit the doorknob, but only a few can throw it through the keyhole. And if you're going to win a championship, you got to throw the ball through the keyhole. And I'm not sure Will can do that. What do you do in terms of a backup then? Because they need a backup regardless. So do you have to be, I guess, more – cautious of who you bring in knowing you know at some point if you don't like what you're seeing from Will Levis midway through the season you've got to put your back up in yeah I, well I mean they got Willis still on the the roster right you know I mean I don't have you know I, I wasn't a Willis fan when he came out when everybody had him going in the first round so I'm not sure about that if he's the true backup but I think you need somebody who can complement Levis. Here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to run an offense for one starter, and then the backup have to change the offense completely. So I think you have to be very careful on who you bring in as a backup. I mean, look what, what, what Brian Callahan was able to do, you know, in Cincinnati in terms of when we saw, you know, when, when Joe Burrow got hurt, right, and, you know, and then – all of a sudden, now you got to go to the backup quarterback, and oh wow, wait a minute, Jake Browning's a pretty good player. You know they got him to play well, they fit the system. I think you need somebody like that Jake Browning guy that they could find, and it doesn't have to be a veteran. It has to be somebody that Brian feels like can develop within the system and execute the same system without losing anything. He is Michael Lombardi, former NFL GM, the GM Shuffle podcast, where you can find his analysis on all podcast platforms. Uh, Michael, this was excellent stuff. Would love to do it again sometime. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. Bye. Absolutely. There he is. Michael Lombardi with lots to say. And I think a lot of, uh, a lot of very good things that I agree with. And I think that's a fair assessment of Will Levis at this point that we can get into more coming up next. 615-737-1045. Plus what he had to say about the Texans who are cooking next. Hey, it's Kayla Anderson for Save a Tree. We talk to our friends every single week, and Dean Glasscock and his crew do a great job when it comes to making sure that you're going to get your trees and shrub right for this time of the year. And it is getting a little bit nicer, so maybe you have them come out and work on what needs to be worked on because maybe some of those trees and shrubs got hit by those winter storms. Well, Save a Tree can continue to help keep the winter storms from breaking branches downing full trees and helping protect your home from damage because heck we might get with hit with another storm here in March. They also have their dormant pruning at save a tray. They'll come out, they'll take the weight off your trees and ornamental plants to help them withstand everything from the storm season and that cold weather. So be proactive and go ahead and give save a tree a call today. It's 615-299-9999. You can also Go online to find out more at saveatree.com. That's S-A-V-A-T-R-E-E.com.
Wednesday morning at RKW is brewed by 8th and Rose, Tramone, Kayla, and Will. 615-737-1045, the number. Really good stuff with Michael Lombardi, former NFL GM. Check out the GM Shuffle podcast, and you can hear him. And the great analysis he gave us a few minutes ago. You can also check out the Ramon, Kayla, and Will podcast to hear that conversation in a matter of minutes. He brings up a good point, guys, that with what the Houston Texans are doing, does that change the strategy for the Titans this offseason now? The fact that you got to block Daniil Hunter, Will Anderson, and Danico Autry in the same defensive line twice a year. I'll always say that. You compete within it. You know I've always said that. You always compete within the division first. Whatever your direct opponent is doing that you got to play two times a year, you need to counter that. If you go get a big-time tackle, well, I got to go get a D, DN rusher or something like that. That works hand-in-hand. Yeah, especially when you're seeing the AFC South. I think just for the years to come, like they're building this division. It's always been joked about in the past several years of, oh, the AFC South, what is that? And now you're looking at some of the teams and how they're building their teams and the success that Houston had last year. Uh, You know, we'll see if Jacksonville can continue to move forward with Trevor Lawrence uh, still being, you know, the guy that everybody looks at as a quarterback that can take you all the way. So, I think you're you're always having to look around at your division and say, okay, what do we add if they're adding this? I think it's interesting. The 50-50 choice for many people between wide receiver or tackle, sometimes what is in your division playing against you twice a year can help make that decision for you. I think at this point, the Texans are making the Titans' decision for them. Their first pick needs to be on a pass protector. Yeah. I agree. That, that, that to me makes a lot of sense. It mm-hmm. does. Again, it's going to be boring. And I think that's honestly why I, uh, we're seeing a lot of defensive moves being made in this uh, free agency. I mean, mostly everything we've done except for center, of course, to and come running back, back. And running back to combat what Houston has done, what Jacksonville already has. And uh, Indiana has already, I keep calling him Indiana, Indianapolis has already <laughs> signed back um, Grover Stewart. They have the Forrest Buckner. They're going after guys, too, that can help support the run when it comes down to Justin Simmons. Like, there's p- pieces in place that I think you're right. Well, forces the hand of what the Titans have to do. And if you believe in uh, if you believe in Fashion New or Marius Mims, if you have to move back, I, I do think the, the method for this is tackled in wide receiver. Yeah. And I know they've said... If nothing else happens. Exactly. And I know that they have said wide receiver, uh, Bill Callahan, they've done that in the past at Cincinnati. It's worked out for him. But I think it has to be exactly what they want. And they see a special guy that they think is exactly the fit that Will Levis needs for years to come in a Roma Dunze or Malik Neighbors. I, I think they would take them but I think they know overall it starts with the line um, like Michael Lombardi said as old school as it is it's still what comes down to a team having success you've got to protect your quarterback and that's not something that has been done here for the last several years or a few years did the Titans chances of trading back go down with Kirk Cousins going to Atlanta Um, because they're no longer in position to select a quarterback at eight Meaning that a team is now less likely to move right in front of them at eight to seven. I think quarterback. And then I, I think it has. And I also throw in the fact that at some point, Justin Fields will be moved on too. So that's another franchise that end up taking potentially a starter caliber quarterback who's young. Uh, and there's no commitment to Justin Fields. You want to have that fifth year option to have him for another year. But if you don't, he's a free agent. At this point, you don't have enough film to convince almost anybody that he's going to be their guy unless you're just going to take a stab at it. Minnesota. That's, m- yeah. Might be the only other yep. spot. That's what I was looking at was do the Vikings decide to make a move just because I think you got Sam Darnold, but I'm sorry. Don't get me started on that front. Uh, you've got to draft a quarterback at some point, and I would think you would try to do it this year. The The challenge with that is that if you are trading with the Titans now at seven, it's so that you skip to the front of the line before someone else can trade. That's what Rand Carthon now has to do is to convince teams around the league that he's getting calls if he wants to trade back. So in the chat, uh, Jared Morris says, yes, we're picking at seven. Uh, in the FNM Bank chat where you can join the conversation at YouTube. That's correct. But Atlanta at eight was dictating a lot of that market because if a team wants to trade up to seven, that means they're trying to get in front of Atlanta 
to take mm-hmm. J.J. McCarthy, who we presume is the fourth quarterback off the board. But the New York Giants can also put you in a scenario if they take J.J. McCarthy at number six right in front of you. Then you have got a lot of blue chip players. You've got either Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunes, or Joe Alt, maybe even two of those players are available to you right then at number seven. Is there a team that's motivated for one of those players to move up and trade with you that we're, we're not talking about? I still think there is an option for the Titans to trade back to answer the question. I don't think that Atlanta signing Kirk Cousins is completely fatal. And is Atlanta still interested in J.J. McCarthy? Because Kirk Cousins isn't getting any younger. I think for a lot of people, J.J. McCarthy is the young, he needs to sit for two or three years option that you pair with a veteran who is already in place and you pay a premium for him, obviously, in the top 10. But maybe he isn't ready right away. Is Atlanta still in the market for J.J. McCarthy? I doubt it, but maybe. And of course, the Jets don't have a big need as far as uh, quarterback goes. They can always use a tackle. Do they want to yes, move with the Titans? I mean, that is a piece right there that can go into it. Uh, again, Atlanta does complicate it now, even more so, because their need is kind of somewhat taking a back seat. When you look at Chicago, other pick at nine. They don't need a quarterback then either. So when you when you try to balance this thing out, only other situation you have is you got Minnesota, you you have potentially Denver. Vegas. Vegas, Vegas at 13. Because yeah. Jimmy G. Yeah, is expected and, and, to be cut tomorrow. And Gardner's not Gardner. You can't have as your star. I, your I love him, but he's yeah. He's, he's a, a backup bridge. quarterback. He's a backup. Yeah. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five is our number. Coming up as we begin the second half of the show, we'll reset the headlines. Take a look at the linebacker that is scheduled to visit with the Titans tomorrow. Next. <laughs> It's Ramon Foster for Two Rivers Fours. And if you're thinking about purchasing a new Ford truck, the time is now at Two Rivers Four because it is truck month. They've got financing rates as low as 1.9%, no payments for 90 days, and bonus cash offers. And this is all on top of Two Rivers Four low prices because they always sell below MSRP and fact way below msrp but the best part about truck month is there is no pressure because two rivers four has non-commissioned sales team okay if you're just interested in test driving not ready to purchase yet no problem you can even call them and schedule a test drive at your house whatever makes it easier for you okay there's a reason two rivers four has been a landmark local business in our community for over 40 years and a reason they are one of the top four dealers in the nation two rivers four the south most trusted four dealer
What's going on? Just about 8 o'clock from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. I am Robert Walsh. Day two of legal tampering in the books with the Titans burning the midnight oil. Once again, signing former Commander's guard Sadiq Charles to a one-year deal. Former teammates with Titans News Center Lloyd Cushenberry. Charles was a fourth-round pick out of LSU who started 18 games over four years in Washington. More clay for Bill Callahan to work with on the offensive line. And Titans also doing their due diligence on a few defensive players. First, former number one overall pick Chase Young. He will be visiting the Titans after visiting New Orleans and Carolina. Young set career highs in sacks with 10, quarterback hits with 8, and pressures with 48 all last year. And we learned this morning, former Dolphins linebacker Jerome Baker scheduled to visit the Titans on Thursday. Baker had 78 tackles, one and a half sacks, two interceptions, and three passes defended in 13 games in Miami last season. And the final running back domino fell yesterday as Derrick Henry signed a two-year deal with the Baltimore Ravens worth $16 million up to $20 million with $9 million guaranteed. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and the Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. And the show goes on into the 8 a.m. hour on a lovely Wednesday morning in Nashville, Tennessee. RKW is brewed by 8th and Rose. The best coffee in Nashville is found on 8th Avenue, Charlotte. The Broadview at Vanderbilt here in their brand new Midtown location. And as well, if you're traveling at the airport, 8th and Rose Coffee cultivates community by the cup. Your favorite retail bag of 8th and Rose coffee grounds in every local Kroger and Whole Foods as well. 615-737-1045 streaming live at 104.5 The Zone TV. That's where you see your bone foster. Kayla Anderson, Robert Walsh making the sausage behind the glass. I'm Will Bowling. Where can they watch it at? Quick while Ramon's mic's off. Uh, That's on Facebook Live, YouTube, Twitter, or Twitch. Twitch, please. As I glide across across the finish line. Yeah, it's like we glide into Baltimore and took your line back. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah. Cut his mic it's off. off I've, I've had enough of him today, man. So one may say that <laughs> Baltimore lost a queen but gained a king yesterday. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. She is your oh. queen to be. Patrick Queen is go. a <laughs> Pittsburgh Steeler and Derek Henry is a Baltimore Raven. Yeah. We asked the people on Twitter this morning, at Ramon Kayla Will, will you, woo- will you root for Derek Henry? To win a Super Bowl as a Baltimore Raven, 62% of you, which is lower than I expected, say no. I expected more of you to say, absolutely not. I will not cheer for Derrick Henry. It's interesting. Most of the responses are like, where would you even ask this? <laughs> well, it's because many of you have actually voted yes, that you will cheer for him to win a Super Bowl. Exactly. Look at those people out there. Respect for the king and what he did here. And I get it. And it's not, it, it's the Baltimore Ravens. Like, there is hate here for yes. the Baltimore Ravens. It, yeah, it, Will's made that very clear. Uh, it's not an AFC South team, but I think I'm a little surprised by people saying they'll root for him. Maybe it's just him as an individual, his success as an individual. If he gets that Super Bowl, though, I think I'm rooting for him because I want to see him in Canton. There's still people that root for AJ here. I know that. That's that. That's like, crazy. Look no, at Will's face. Joking. Will's like, oh, <laughs> nobody <laughs> in this up. city uh, who is a Titans fan should ever, ever root for the Baltimore Ravens in any capacity. In, in yeah. Unless you have money on the game and you want to make U.S. American dollars. Yeah. That I understand. But no dice for you. No. Can't do it. Can't what if do you it. marry Bert? I mean, there's only one person doing that right now that we know of, okay? No yeah. people doing that right now as we know of. <laughs> I think Joy Taylor made a good point about this, though, when she was referencing uh, Saquon signing with the Eagles. Uh, Joey Taylor, obviously Jason Taylor's brother, uh, she has a, a, a personal connection to this. When Jason was still wanting to play, Miami wanted to move off of him. 
But he only had one offer. The only offer he had was to go play for the New York Jets, who obviously division rivals with the Miami Dolphins. What was and Joy Taylor uh, yesterday said? What was he supposed to do? Retire? <laughs> what, what was he supposed to do? Retire? You got to go make money. The same okay. way I'm not upset at Queen for going to get a bag. I'm glad he got paid. He deserved to get paid. I just hate that it's with uh with that backstabbing dude. God, man, I want to cuss so bad on this show. <laughs> but I'm not upset at him. I understand it's a game. There is no loyalty in professional sports. As much no. as uh, the front offices and the teams would like their fans to believe that, there is no loyalty. It's not. Mm-mm. And and the team that had them clearly didn't want them or didn't want to commit to them by yeah. that much in, in dollar amounts. So uh, I ain't got no problem with it. The cheering aspect of it, hey, we can hate him during the season, man. As it yeah. stands right now, I'm, I'm happy for Derek. It's, it's clear to me. It seemed like he wanted to be there. That tweet came out quick, fast, and in a hurry. Uh, Jimmy Seafood has followed him, and I'm not sure if he followed him back, but there's a connection already been made about Baltimore and the crab cakes and the people that's going to love Derrick Henry. That's uh, when, uh, not to cut you off, no, that's when ahead. Baltimore fans knew that he was coming because Jimmy Seafood is is on top of all that's this stuff. That's amazing. But tweeted, Derrick Henry just followed us back on, on Instagram. Wow. And then three minutes later, the, it was public that he had signed his deal. To mm-hmm. be Derrick Henry wherever you go, this is one fact. He's a, he's a marketing-like He's like a brand. brand. I mean, he's he's just you throw him anywhere and they'll find a way to make him on the billboards, on the commercials locally. I mean, he's a dream to have in that capacity, too. Mm-hmm. On Twitter, Florida Dreamin writes in and says, I'd root for Derek to get 2000 yards as the Ravens go. 0 and 17. That's <laughs> perfect. Yep. It's absolutely perfect. <laughs> and I do think he still has work to do right to put himself in Hall of Fame conversations. If his career ended today, he's not a Hall of Famer. No. No. He's not. No. He he got his uniform and cleats and football in the Hall of Fame for the 2,000-yard season. That is facts yeah. right there. But the season that he has, which is why it, uh, it had me thinking about how, how much longer does he have to go? Does he do these two in Baltimore? He goes somewhere else. Derek is relatively young. Heck, if you can get a couple years out of Adrian Peterson, I think you can with him. And Derek also had to delay to the start of his career, too. Yeah, he did. He didn't have those carries the first, what, two years mm-hmm. with DeMarco Murray because he was the lead back then. Yep. And Tony Pollard on the DeMarco Murray career arc. Mm. Dallas to Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Dallas to Tennessee. Hunter writes in on Twitter, at Ramon Kayla Will. Can we hear if Ramon has any knowledge on the new guard signing? Would love to hear what he knows about him, if anything. That is Sadiq Charles, Sadiq. who is a member of the LSU National Championship team along with Lloyd Cushenberry. Guard from Washington who played sparingly after winning the job last season in Washington uh, at the guard position. Dealt with some injuries. Struggled when he was healthy, though. Ramon, what do you know about him? That last part right there is the most evident thing. Struggled when he was healthy. Pass protection is a hard thing to learn in the NFL, especially whenever you uh, play on a bad offensive line with a bad team. Sam Howell and the Washington Commanders last year gave up over 60 sacks. That tells you a lot right there. What you also have to look at it is he's a backup utility guy to me. He's played right yeah. guard, left guard. He's played tackle some in the league, too. You're getting depth at this point. The only uh, – I ain't going to say the grace that I have, but, but uh, what what I believe in is this. And, and here's where it gets skewed to me, and I was frustrated last night. I told Will and them. I was I, I ended up, like, hitting up uh, them, just sending them a tweet, like, this is what ticks me off at times. Um. With signings like Sadiq, Charles, he has a purpose. His purpose is depth. I don't look at him as a starter type right now. He's mm-hmm. still in the developmental period of his career. The deal is cheap. You need fresh bodies. You need young bodies. You need healthy bodies. He checks all of those boxes. If you believe, how can we have one, it be one way but not the other? If you believe that Bill Callahan isn't we drop his name so much on, on and all these networks. So. Yeah, but if you have and believe in him, why trash a guy when you know what his role is if you think Bill Callahan can help develop him? That's my thing. You're not asking Sadiq Charles to come in and be a day one starter, to my knowledge. Clearly, a guy who is very respected, and we heard Michael Lombardi say that a second ago, right? He is, is earned his weight and go with how he can get the most out of guys. And that's the way I look at Sadiq's situation, Charles. 
he's a backup right now mm-hmm. to develop. Offensive linemen take time to develop. And, yes, he's been at a bad place in Washington and has had some bad ball be a part of his play too. I don't view him nothing more right now than a guy that's inside that building that's a fresh big body too that can potentially help you down the line. As a backup, most of the times you're a backup for a reason until you prove that you can start. So that's where I am on a guy like him. He's played big ball. He has played some in the NFL. He's moved mobile enough. He's a fighter from what I've seen. He's just getting bad positions when it comes down to his technique and how he uh, has been filling in for the Washington Commanders. 62 sacks, that's uh, – yeah, that, that's, that's tough. Woof. How many? Uh, I have to look and see how many PFF contributed to him. Although that's not law because PFF doesn't know the pass protection um, rules, right? And how it goes. I'll say this: you always have to have depth, and it might not look pretty, and it might not be a guy who's get got the highest PFF grade. But when it comes to offensive linemen, we keep seeing it here with injuries and shuffling. You got to have them. And you're right. Bill Bill Callahan, we repeat it over and over. He's a luxury. I, I would say he probably has some input on, on some of these linemen he's bringing in or, you know, these guys that he's supposed to help mature and help mm-hmm. develop. So it, he knows the task at hand. And yeah. again, you're not going to have all these pretty pieces as depth pieces. Some of them aren't going to be you know, guys you know. And and that's the thing. You can't have a whole backup <laughs> no. room of 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 just all pros. You're not gonna get that, okay? You, nobody's gonna be a backup and be Trent Williams. You no. play when you're Trent Williams. Sadiq Charles had six hundred and forty three offensive snaps last season, all of them at left guard, and he allowed four sacks. Four sacks okay. and thirty seven pressures also. Three penalties. Yeah. Not great. No. Certainly. But I believe that also could be more of an indictment on the players already on the roster. Mm. I mean, 62 sacks is a lot of hits. Gross. It's a backup guard. He's a Thank you. Who mm-hmm. may be able to compete with Daniel Brunskill at right guard as it stands right now. But I understand Titans fans feeling frustrated as they watch the Houston Texans build the Monstars on defense. And all the Titans had yesterday to add was a backup guard. It's not worth freaking out about. It's a very incomplete exercise at this point in free agency. It's like complaining that your team is losing by a touchdown five minutes into a football game. That's essentially where the Titans are right now. Mm. Dang it. Mm. Gave up a touchdown on the opening drive. Fire everybody. The GM's (laughs) incompetent. Mm. Deep breaths. I understand the frustration. You give up a touchdown on the opening drive and the Texans spike the football on you just like they are right now. I get it. But that being said, there's a lot of time left in this game. We'll take a history lesson real quick too. Over the last four years, how trash have the Houston Texans been to actually get to this point to where they're making trash. these moves? Three head yeah. coaches. GMs. I'm talking about moving on from D-Hop in that situation. GMs have changed. Ownership, did it change or did they just silence him? It was just they a didn't lot. Change, yeah. Yeah. It didn't change. It didn't change. Think about what they had to go through to get to this point. Yeah. That's my only, that's my only pushback on what Houston is doing right and now. And look, they drafted well. You have to give them that, too. This Tip past year, yeah, 100%. To be fair, the Titans have been bad, though, for two straight years to put them in the same position. The Titans have more money than Houston does. To and a fair, rookie contract also on a quarterback. But to the accumulation of them selling prod, selling guys away to get more draft capital, you hadn't been in that good of a mm. position like Houston has no. been as of late. Yeah, that's, true. Yeah, that, that's the that difference to me, where you got a one and a three in the same draft, and they both hit. You had not had that type of luck, or you ain't sucked that bad. Right, but from the free agent market perspective, the Titans and Titans are in a better situation than the Texans. This year, last year, they weren't. The Texans are in a good situation year. last year. I'm yeah. saying right now, the Titans have more money to spend than Houston, and Houston's spending more of it. Yeah, because they see more out of their franchise quarterback, too. It's fair. To Michael Lombardi's point. Uh, an update from Georgia Pro Day and a couple of Titans prospects, one of whom Ramon mentioned seconds ago. Uh, that will get you uh, as far as injuries are concerned for a couple of potential Titans targets. Plus, we'll get into the conversation about Legereus Sneed, Chase Young, Justin Simmons, Jerome Baker. Titans are swinging big for some defensive stars. What are you willing to give up for Legereus Sneed, if anything? Next.
One thing that really makes Genesis Diamonds stand out from other jewelry stores is the education you get. Yes, the education. These are not clerks behind the counter. These are seasoned pros. They know everything there is to know about diamonds, and they will take the time to teach you in a way that is transparent, informative, useful. They'll even teach you how to buy like a dealer buys. They will show you the inside tree, uh, secrets of the diamond industry. They will show you how diamonds are priced and graded on the world market and how you can maximize your budget. They will also teach you all about lab-grown diamonds, too, and how you need to be very, very careful with where and how you buy these. All this is done in a relaxed, no pressure, no expectations kind of atmosphere. They know most guys don't know much about diamonds like me, okay? So they are committed to teaching you, not selling you. Then, when you are ready, Genesis will give you access to one of the largest selection of GIA-certified diamonds in America. Yes, I said the largest. Nobody has this kind of selection. They will let you see 10, 15, 20 diamonds in your price range side by side so you can make an intelligent decision. I'm telling you, if you're diamond shopping, it's that time of the year where you're getting engaged, this is the place to go. It's a no-brainer. The education you want, the selection you need, the price you deserve with zero risk and zero pressure. Genesis Diamonds voted best jewelry store and best place to buy engagement rings 10 years in a row. They're located in Green Hills and Cool Springs.
Wednesday morning in RKW, Ramon, Kayla, and Will brewed up by 8th and Roast. Coming up in just about a half hour, Rhett Bryan of Titans Radio for his weekly Wednesday morning visit. If you missed our conversation with former NFL general manager Michael Lombardi, it is available now wherever you download podcasts. We will never encourage you to stop listening to this radio program, but that would still be listening to us. If you want to go check out that conversation, some very interesting things that he had to say about Will Levis at the very end of that conversation. So uh, curious to uh, see what the fan reaction is there. 615-737-1045, how you jump in. Jordan Reed writing on Twitter just a few moments ago, ESPN NFL draft and college football analyst. Georgia tight end Brock Bowers and tackle Amarius Mims, both with hamstring injuries, will not participate in Georgia's pro day today. But we'll both have a separate workout for NFL teams on April 10th. Mm. We're in the wild, wild west of pro days. I feel like it's getting ridiculous now. How many times guys are like, oh, I woke up with a little bit of a, like, a, little bit of a cough. Well, I'm just going to have my own pro day. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll say this. What, two things. One, Amarius Mims needs this. He has to work out. Lack of games, injuries in college, the checklist of stuff. You don't want to be a big Ferrari is what I'm telling you. It's one thing to be a small Ferrari. I can justify, oh, there's a little small petite guy, okay? He's supposed to get injured. But when you got a big, they're, we're, we're judged unfairly. We're looked at differently. You're expected to be a certain way. And as far as Amarius Mims goes, he has to be able to show that he can perform. The best thing about being an offensive lineman is you're known as being reliable. You're known as always being there. And for a dude like him, he can't afford these type of mishaps and misses as often as he's had them, especially in his playing career and especially so far in this pre-drafting that they've had too. Now, the other side of this is I ain't Amarius Mims. Amarius Mims is a bona fide first rounder when it boils down. And a lot of these guys are choosing to make these business decisions because they've either gotten so much more business savvy to say, why do I got to go do 30 workouts and get the crap beat out of me in these settings to a team that's not going to draft me? The people that will want to work out of Marius Mims, I think, will be serious contenders. And I think the same somewhat goes for uh, Brock Bowers, too, when it comes down to how he's going to be looked at because he is a specialty piece. You got to go to a team that absolutely needs him, and he can't force himself up, I don't think, in the draft. So his ability and availability is crucial this time of the year. But specifically for me, because I like the the athlete himself as far as the Marius Mims go, um, you got to be there. You have to show up. You you do, especially in this tackle class, Ramon, where you know you've got the two specialties at the top of the draft. And how many times have we said – Behind that, you could go either way. So how are you going to make yourself stick out amongst some of these guys that maybe you can't say automatically are going to be that guy? And he's one of those guys we've been you know, talking about. He could be that guy. So make the most of it up until the draft. And it's a bummer that you're not going to see him. Is it the end of the world? No. But I think every opportunity he can have specifically to get GMs looking at him, to get scouts looking at him, mm-hmm. is going to help him maybe move up that draft board before one of these other tackles. As for the Brock Bowers thing, I think that's interesting because, look, I'm not going to take anything away from how talented Brock Bowers is, but he did, you know, suffer an injury last year. I feel like, you know, you're looking at this guy as that tight end in this draft and not many tight ends go in the first round. This guy has been obviously talked about as going in the first round. But if anything, I feel like we've talked less about Brock Bowers in the last few weeks, Um, not just here, but everywhere. You haven't Mm -hmm. heard as much about him. So I look at this also as a spot where you have your quarterback of choice throwing to you at your pro day. That's going to continue to help you. To the phones, Dustin is in Laverne, 615-737-1045. Good morning, Dustin. Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, Just a quick comment on earlier from when y'all were talking about, you know, our players going to different teams. Um, I mean, it's kind of like when you get divorced or something, man. I mean, you don't wish ill upon them, but I don't want to see my ex-wife leave me and go have all these amazing things happen to her. No, I'm not going to root for that for sure. So, um but I will say, as far as uh, with our free agency and everything, I'm feeling a little bit disheartened because 
the Texans seem like they're doing so well. Um, hopefully, like you guys said, we'll catch up with them. But uh, my main question today was, I w- I've been hearing about <clears throat> the Vikings and like Kroger and like this possible are the Bengals and Kroger and possible trade for Justin Jefferson on a hundred million dollar contract. Like, I don't know how much of that is real or not, but I'm want to know from you guys' perspective. Do they even have the money to make something like that happen? Like, I don't understand that, you know, having a cap, how they're going to make that happen. So maybe you could explain that a little bit if that's even an option. So thanks, Dustin. Appreciate the call. I think money wise, you could absolutely make it work with Justin Jefferson for sure. Easiest way to make that work signing bonuses, uh, roster bonuses when it comes down to him being on a roster. So if you do a, a let's go a five year or a Four year one twenty five for a guy like Justin uh, Jefferson. You probably give him twenty five to sign base salary this year of ten. You put it in bonuses. What happens is that 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 twenty five to sign is actually broken up over those four or five years. That's where that cap hit comes into play. You put that guaranteed money up front so that you have flexibility for the rest of the cap over the duration of his salary, over his time being on your roster. Justin Jefferson's a dude that I said, yeah, we probably going to get those four years out of him. Then we'll have to restructure at some point. You put that money in bonuses, signing bonus, roster bonuses, or you put it in game-by-game bonuses to guarantee him, hey, your money is there. And when it comes down to you getting paid, we're good. But it also keeps his cap number lower to where you can operate. But, again, that boils down to a situation of how much do you want to surround Levis and how fast do you want to start competing again? There is a balance in this. And I hate to say this, guy. That was a beautiful question, by the way, too, and a great analogy of you not wanting your ex to do well, by the way, too. Nah. <laughs> but you don't want to treat real life like Madden. That's my only contingency for these mm-hmm. types of moves that are being thrown out here for this type of money for those types of players that have no real guarantee that they're, they're going to take you to a Super Bowl. And right now, like that just seems like a lot of work to get one piece. And I know it'd be a very valuable piece, but with what the Titans are doing and how they're rebuilding, like they've got a specific plan. And heck, you can never say never. Maybe this is part of their plan down, you know, in terms of getting him here. But I just feel like it's so complicated, some of these things, that I don't see the Titans doing that right now in the spot that they're in. We got a question on Twitter earlier this morning, too, that I think weaves well into that question from Dustin, where Josh writes in, can we discuss why everyone cares about draft picks? Other than a first-round pick, if you can trade off a draft pick to get a proven player who you know 100% can play, then trade it. A draft pick is a guess, a hopeful wish that you hit. Give me the guarantee. You can't build a team like that every year. The, the answer is money. Like mo- most other answers in life and in sports. If you can get an elite player and take the risk on paying him $3 million a year, then you take that risk yep. and you trust your coaches to develop a guy for less money into a better player than someone who you trade for who's immediately going to warrant 15 to $20 million a season. There's only so many times you can cash in that chip and say, I'm confident enough that T Higgins is worth giving up the potential of having a guy for four seasons, maybe five on a cheap deal, just to have somebody for two seasons, maybe three on a very expensive deal. Exactly. I, I'll quickly just add to that too. The NFL and everything that's a part of it is like fight club. There's a lot of stuff that happens and goes on. It is, I ain't going to say it's ego stroking. It is watch me be better than you. Mm-hmm. It is a competition outside of this world to say, hey, look at me get four years out of Aaron Brewer as an undrafted guy. Yep. Look at me draft Jeffrey Simmons with a torn ACL and he turns into an all pro. Look at me draft A.J. Brown in the second round, and he turns into an all-pro. There is a pat on the back, a walk in the room feeling that you get from being a monster of a picker when it comes down to your players that I don't think you understand of why you draft picks are so coveted. That is your DNA on the field when it comes down to you building your team. That's why the draft picks are so important. Also, on top of the money. We heard uh, Lombardi say that a second ago, right? If I can get the most out of a four, fifth, six, seven rounder in four years, we've won. Because who was a fourth rounder? Legereus Sneed. Look at the career that he's had because you got the most out of him. It's a balance. You've got to have a balance. That's why we see 
very few teams have consistency throughout their organization because they have the right balance of getting the draft picks right, and it doesn't happen every year, but also adding those free agents that you're also going to get the most out of because sometimes you're adding guys that are 27, 28 years old um, who might be at their prime, but how much more can you get out of them? It's such a balance, and you're right. It's so competitive because you're going to take a risk on a guy sometimes in free agency, let's say. Say we can continue to to work this like D-Hop last year. Mm -hmm. Puka in the FNM Bank chat, in all caps, Rams won Super Bowl through trading picks. Yes, with a proven quarterback. Yep. With players like Cooper Cup. Context. Who they drafted. Yep, third, second. With round. a roster core that they built through drafting exceptionally. And they're still drafting exceptionally. And even with those picks they traded, they still got starters out of the late rounds. And, by the way, had a quarterback that was capable of winning them a Super Bowl. Puka, with all due respect, that is a ridiculous comparison compared to where the Titans are right now. And then what happened? Well, yeah, and then it crumbled. Then it went down the gutter. But now it's going to go back up because they've got sure. an outstanding general manager and an outstanding head coach. Yeah. And they have an Aaron Donald. They have a Hulk, as we would say in the Marvel mm-hmm. Universe. But that's not a comparison to where the Titans are right now. The Titans are three years away from being in the position where you're taking flyers on OBJ and you're trading for Von Miller and you're wheeling and dealing and giving away your future for the right now. The Titans need to give away their right now to build for the future. And Jameson brings up a good point. And an owner that was intentional about spending money. Yeah, crocky has got money. Uh, Jerome Baker is going to visit this week on Thursday. Discussed that a little bit earlier this morning. A fantastic option at inside linebacker from the Miami Dolphins who... Spent time with Coach Frank Bush, who held, of course, the same role as he does now in Tennessee in Miami when Jerome Baker joined the Dolphins as a third-round pick in 2018. Last season, he had 78 tackles, two picks, an interception return for a touchdown, a sack and a half, and three passes defended. Essentially, guys, he is the best coverage linebacker by a wide margin left on the board. I said essentially his name was brought. He can't leave Nashville. You gotta, you gotta make a strong offer to quote uh, Nashville native Will Wade to him on Thursday. I was just gonna say that this may be a position to where he might have to give an extra couple ducats. I mean, you can't if if you want to compete and go tit for tat in the AFC <laughs> South. You got to – he can't leave. I don't know what his price is going to be or what the signing bonus is going to entail. And that's where you probably uh, – uh, that's, that's probably where you win him over when it comes to Jerome Baker. He can't leave when he's that good side to side, has familiarity with Frank Bush. You mentioned that. I didn't know that, Will. Uh, but if you don't believe in the coverage skills of Kenneth Murray, mm-hmm. this is where you believe in the coverage skills of a Jerome Baker. Like you got a thumper and you got a out-in-space guy. I mean, God, could you imagine that and just the production that you could get out of those two uh, and a guy that's worn the green dot down there? Man, you talk about anybody down there that talks about him in Miami, that's been the guy, the guy that gets it done on the field, the guy that's an extraordinary leader because you lose a Aziz Alshire, who was a captain, by the way, in his only year here in Tennessee. That's rare that that happens. Um, you get a guy like that and you pair him up, like you're saying, with Murray, who at times there's been some skepticism there on on what he can do. But you got a guy like that in him. Then I think you can make it work. And you're really shoring up that linebacker position, which we've questioned a little, even with a Dr. Gibby that just doesn't have that physical attribute. And, and we Jack see, Gibbons. Or Jack, uh, yes, I'm sorry. Those. Jack Gibbons. Oh, I'm so used to. Saying Dr. Dr. And Gibbons. he also paired up well also with David Long Jr. Yeah. in Miami, too. Who is a playmaker. Who had a good season with Jerome yeah. Baker when he was out there together with him. Playmaker here, too. Report yesterday from Browns beat writer Brad Stainbrook is that the Titans have emerged with serious interest in signing corner Legereus Sneed. He writes, talks will continue, but Tennessee is very interested. Buck Rising said that on his show yesterday as well, saying yesterday on the Buck Rising show, the buzz has never been louder around the Titans in Sneed. Ben Stainbrook also added that a third-round pick has been discussed for Legeria Sneed. Obviously, if you follow the Titans in their draft and this show, the Titans do not have a third-round pick. So that being said, do you believe that Legeria Sneed could be acquired for a 2025 third-round pick? Yes or no? 
I think if you got a a, 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 a golden tongue or silver tongue, as as some would, would say Rand has, then I try to leverage that. Right now, I don't think they can afford to keep LeJarrius Sneed. They will want to as far as um, Kansas City is concerned. But if you can go ahead and get them off the books and get a pick for them, I think there's delayed satisfaction in that, gratification in that. I do. Um, with as good as that team is projected to be anyway, coming off the Super Bowl, them losing the corner and potentially getting a third-round pick and picking the corner in the first round next year, um, I can see that being the case. That's the thing about Kansas City. They're still in, still in the position of having a first round of this year. That can go to the corner position. And they got a good DNA of their defense already set. They got a good rush. Russian coverage works together where if you either got a new starter in-house or you got a young guy trying to learn, that's where it becomes very – uh, advantageous for Kansas City to take that. And I also look at the fact that right now it seems that Kansas City don't have many bidders for LeJarrius Sneed other than the Titans and I'd even throw Pittsburgh in there. Okay, They could go after a guy like him and pair him up with Joey Porter Jr. Like there are options there. But as far as it seems that everybody's knocking down Kansas City's door, it doesn't seem to be the case to give up a second round pick or um, a first rounder, if that's what they're looking for. He recently spoke to at a um, Big Brothers Big Sisters event in Kansas City, and he did make it clear he he would like to be back. That would be his first choice. Well, liking and the reality of being back is two different things, as we know. But he's clearly putting it out there. I want to be back. I want to go for three straight Super but that Bowls. Also makes him a great negotiator it does. with, That's the, what with I'm Kansas saying. City. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not devaluing exactly. himself. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so yeah, he's playing the game for sure. But you would love to have this guy. I mean, been a huge part of the success of that defense. Uh speaks Steve Spagnolo saying just a really smart player. Um, I feel like he would be a huge add to a position that has been a little weaker here. And a position that is the quarterback of the defense. It is a highly regarded, very important position on defense. And the only thing is, are you willing to give up, like you said, your future picks for a guy like this that might be here three more years? Uh, 27, I believe, Legereus Sneed is. And you could get three productive years out of him. But they don't have a third-round pick. So if you're willing to give next year's third, I'm up for it. And you also could say this. He's a fourth-round pick. Maybe you see a guy in this draft as your future corner that you're like, you know what, we're just going to bet on ourselves. We're going to bet on a guy that we think could be that guy in the future. You have to wait. But if you want it now, you're going to have to make it happen, and you're going to have to give up something for sure. Yes or no, are you willing to put Traylon Burks in a package for Legereus? Yes. (laughs) No. 615-737-1045, 615-737-1045, our number. We'll answer that. Take wow. your phone calls. Take a look at other headlines and tell you where Brian Callahan and Rand Carthon are today. Next. Hey, it's Kayla Anderson with our friends from QC Kinetics. This is the time of year, and you should be always uh, being able to enjoy your life and stop letting that pain in your joints keep you from doing what you love to do this spring and summer. You can call QC Kinetics now. QC Kinetics is the nation's leader in regenerative medicine, and we're talking about long-lasting joint pain relief here. No surgery, no drugs, and no downtime. In fact, QC Kinetics is literally transforming lives. Their advanced treatments, it's awesome how it works. They harness your own body's ability to restore and repair that damaged tissue, leaving you feeling really good. Pro athletes have been doing that for decades, but now this life-changing treatment is available for you too. So you can walk and run, climb stairs, play golf, whatever you want to do pain-free No pain pills, no risky surgery. It's an all-natural solution. So take action now. Live your best life this upcoming spring and summer. Give them a call for a free consultation. It's QC Kinetics at 615-249-4024. At 615-249-4024.
RKW brewed by Eighth and Rose to 104.5 The Zone. Wrap it up hour number three on a beautiful Wednesday morning. Re- Brian coming up in 15 minutes. We can tell you where Brian Callahan and Rand Carthon are today. They're in Athens, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Georgia Pro Day and officially confirmed as visitors in Athens, both Rand and Brian. Watching the dogs. Oof. Trying to find out who's coming down the track. I wonder how that car ride was down if they drove. I wonder I, if they were in a mean machine in red and black. Mm. I mean, all you I would do, drive. I, I would, too. I'd probably get a Hellcat also. There you go. Look at you. Get it? Georgia Bulldogs? Look at you. Hellcats. Did they borrow your Georgia. sprinter? They'll see a lot of drunk, know, annoying Georgia not, fans. Not this time. Yeah, they will. Barking. In y'all, spikes. Y- y'all have not realized I'm just doing their chant this whole time. Oh, no, we did not. Did no one get oh, yeah. the... Oh. We, don't, we don't get that. That's how they call the dogs. The puppy. Who's that coming down the track? Ugh. Never heard of it. Okay. Okay. Let's go to the phones. Paul is in Franklin up next. What's up, Paul? How? Hey, good morning, everybody. How y'all doing? Great. We're good, Paul. Great to be alive and be in Tennessee. Look here. Let's just go on and talk about King Henry. You know, (laughs) this is, this is a tough thing right here. Uh, That team up north, well, I don't call them the Baltimore Ravens. I call them the Baltimore Crows. That's what I call them. Uh, to me, a raven is a nice way of calling a crow a crow. <laughs> uh, I can't stand. I can't stand them. And that's just like as a lot of people's moved in Middle Tennessee in the last twenty years, will, and they call a a, a vulture. When we see it, we call it a buzzard. They they call it a vulture. Mm-hmm. It's a buzzard, all right? That's what I think about the Baltimore Crows. Out of the 31 teams King Henry could have went to, brother, that's the bottom of the barrel. Get them, Paul. What's that? Get them. Let let them have it. That's the the (laughs) bottom of the absolute barrel with me. But there is another side to this. He is one of my all-time favorites. Tight. He is in that group with McNair, George, Bullock, Frank Wycheck, uh, Blaine Bishop. He is in that pantheon with me. I've seen that man, Will, for years and years and years, give everything he got to our franchise. And he did. And a lot of times, he's the only thing we had. Y'all know that. So as far as me rooting for him, you know what? I ain't going to root against him. I'm not. And if he goes on and wins the Super Bowl, it'd be like a big pill I got to swallow, but I would swallow it for King Henry. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate the call. I think there are a lot of Titans fans that are uh, that are in the same boat. The Baltimore Crows is a good one. I want y'all to know something. We've got to keep it rolling, but we appreciate it, Paul. I want y'all to know something real quick. I ain't never come out and had no cute nicknames for the Titans or made fun of them the last two years when they were bad. I ain't said nothing about no Titans fans, but every time somebody comes on, it's the Ratbirds, it's the Vultures, it's the Crows. I never brought up how you spit in our Walter Man Man of the Year's face. I never talk about any of that, but I'm the daggum crow. Crows are very smart. They're attached to glittery things. Just be a little nicer. They're actually and big birds, too. Aren't they, are they big birds. attracted to dead things, too? No, the, those are decomposers. Those are the vultures. <laughs> yeah, it's vultures those, okay. and buzzards. So crows have a little bit uh, higher standard. Crows Wait. are apparently very intelligent. Yep. <laughs> it ain't me, bird. It ain't my fault. Mo in Nashville next. What's up, Mo? Yeah, I just had a question for yep. Mo. Um, what exactly does, like, on a contract, what does guaranteed money mean? So, like, for Derrick Henry, for example, he got a two-year, $16 million deal with $10 million guaranteed. What exactly does that mean? That's that, all I need to know. That's, uh, Thank you, essentially, it means this. That's a one-year nine. And if he does well or they want to bring him back, then he gets the rest of it. It's essentially what that breaks down into. Again, when he signed that deal, I forget what it was at the signing, but he gets that plus the base salary that make, takes it up to nine in that first year. A two-year deal structured like that is essentially a one um, with the opportunity to make it a two if he plays well. Same way that uh, D-Hop here essentially got a two-year deal. 
and D Hop did well last year. So mm-hmm. now you roll that over into his full contract. The guaranteed money is all that matters. And say for that nine that he paid out, that they are paying out. His dead cap could be four and a half million if they cut him because you spread that nine or that signing bonus over two years. You break it down that way. So if you're selling, it's finicky, but it's very simple too. If he signs for 16, get the nine up front, cut him in year one. Well, we divide that by two and it's four and a half cap hit, I would think. There you go. 615-737-1045. Coming up, the executive producer of Titans Radio, Rhett Bryan, talks NFL free agency and Titans free agency next. Hey, it's Kayla Anderson for the Wang Vision Institute. Uh, We take trips to get our physicals and we get our teeth cleaned, but sometimes we avoid the eyes. And I actually went in a few months ago now and had the full eye health checkout and good stuff for the future that I needed to know. And right now, just to make sure that my eyes are feeling good and even got some readers. So if you want to go check out your eyes, make sure they're headed in the right direction. They do it all well there. They've got some great doctors. They also know how to take care of your skin. They are offering intense pulse light treatments now. You might be wondering, well, what is that? It's a photofacial treatment, rejuvenating the skin. Maybe you've had sun damage. You're seeing those dark spots appear now that you're getting a little older. These treatments are awesome for evening out skin tone and texture as well as if you deal with hyperpigmentation. So for more information on IPL treatments, along with other services, you can visit wangvisioninstitute.com today. Also, if you want to check out their free online vision seminar, that is every Tuesday at 6.45 p.m. They can answer some of those questions about what you should do. Maybe you need LASIK surgery. Uh, They'll tell you everything you need to know. RSVP, schedule your free consultation and treatment today at wayingvisioninstitute.com.
What's going on? Nine o'clock into one. Now it's nine o'clock from the 1045 The Zone Studios. I am Robert Walsh. Day two of legal tampering in the books. The new league year starts today at three o'clock. All teams must be cap compliant. You'll see teams restructuring deals, restructuring contracts, cutting people. All of that has to be done before 3 p.m. But the Titans were burning the midnight oil once again last night, signing former Commander's guard Sadiq Charles. Also former teammates with new Titan center Lloyd Cushenberry. Charles was a fourth-round pick out of LSU who started 18 games over four years with Washington. More clay for Bill Callahan to work with on the offensive line. Titans doing due diligence on a couple defensive players. First, former number one overall pick Chase Young. Young is visiting Tennessee after visiting New Orleans and Carolina. Young set career highs in sacks quarterback hits and pressures last year with the Commanders and the 49ers. Also doing due diligence on Jerome Baker, former Dolphins linebacker who was released earlier in the offseason. Last year with the Dolphins had 78 tackles, one and a half sacks, two interceptions, and three passes defended in 13 games. And finally, the final running back domino, domino fell yesterday as Derrick Henry signed a two-year deal 16 million worth up to 20 million with 9 million guaranteed with the Baltimore Ravens. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and the Vols. This is 1045 The Zone. Fourth and final hour of the show. It is 9 a.m. already in Nashville, Tennessee. And if you've been listening to RKW this morning, it has flown by for you as it has for us. Ramon Foster, Kayla Anderson, Robert Walsh spinning the hits. He, even though he is a fan of the Baltimore Crows. I'm Will Bowling, 615-737-1045. <laughs> Rhett Bryan in studio joining us for the fourth quarter of our Wednesday RKW. We are going to score more points in the fourth quarter. We're going to get better as the game goes. Good morning, Red. Good morning, everyone. How are we on this fine Wednesday? We're good. Lovely. A lot of Ravens hate. It's been a good thing. And a lot of Derrick Henry love, which is also a good thing. Look, here's the thing. He's a a generational piece, a legacy, and a legacy position for the Titans. He had a fantastic career here, even though it got off to a slower start when he first, you know, got going because, you know, DeMarco Murray was here. Um Consummate pro, I mean, all of that. Will I root for the Ravens because he's there? Hell no. That ain't happening. Um, but I wish him the best. He was, you know, he was always decent to deal with, and um, he just went about his business. He just went about his business and was a huge part of this franchise. But, uh, you know, for everyone who's in mourning this morning, I uh, tried to talk to you about this for a while that you know this is a business and this is what happens it just i've seen too many of these guys come and go very few though like derrick henry we got a lot of uh or we saw one specific tweet at us earlier this morning that said i hope the ravens go zero and 17 and he rushes for two thousand yards i like that <laughs> you know what i could i could actually embrace that ramon i'm okay uh, with I'm, that I'm, I'm telling you that's that's pretty solid that's right rat bird logic right I'm, there. I'm talking about that barbecue chicken okay it that's is what we're talking about. it's good that's every time chicken. yeah that's, that's all i'm telling you man hey, what you got on the grill some barbecue chicken oh you got it from baltimore yeah that's where i got it from yeah. do you think he has to have a super bowl though to win or to go into the hall of fame i think it depends on what his use is in this system, like it, it's good for him in a couple of ways. First of all, you got doggone Lamar Jackson right there. So hopefully he can dial back some of the carries and, you know, elongate his career in this sense so that he can get over that 10,000 yard mark. And I think, I think he'll do that. Um, but a Super Bowl and 10,000 yards and a 2,000 yeah. yard club member and all those things, yeah, that would, that would, be the tipping point for me yeah 
Um, he's got to piece together some at least 800 yard seasons. Got to. How far is he away? I'm yeah, asking he's, this question. Well, he's over 8,000 yards. Over 8, over, yeah. over 8,000. Yeah. yeah if he, I think 11 plus, if he finds a way to get a Super Bowl or another Russian title, Russian title would do a lot for him, but it's mm-hmm. a matter of personnel and the way Baltimore sets up their run game, too. Sure. That's been my biggest thing. And I think a lot of people will start to see that more and more. It's a few premier one back teams, and I don't know if Baltimore's one of them. Derek's a, a great piece to have. We saw him in moments get those short yardage plays, and there were times where he was fighting through tackles and making big runs. Remember, we've seen him do these things. But As much as it pains me to say this, I think he's one of the missing pieces that the Ravens have needed for a while. They've got they've had a nice stable of running backs, especially in the last handful of years. But this is a different animal, and good Lord, the RPO stuff with him and – Lamar Jacks, it just, oof. <laughs> but again, I wish him the best. Brett Bryan in studio with us talking Titans and NFL free agency here this morning. Uh, Brett, what is your favorite addition the Titans have made so far? I, I think without a doubt, it has to be Lloyd Cushenberry just because it's a stabilizing force on the offensive line. Um, you went from Ben Jones, who was that for a long time here. And this is, I'm not knocking Aaron Brewer. Aaron Brewer's a good dude. Really like Aaron Brewer. But, you know, his lack of lowers, strength, anchor, weight, all whatever you want to call it, um, you know, it was evident at times. And good for him for getting getting a bag and going to Miami. Good for him. Uh, but Lloyd Cushenberry, I went back to, and looked at the the draft board that Mac and I put together every year, and Cesar Ruiz and Lloyd Cushenberry were the top two options in whatever order you want to put them in in that draft class at the center position. And when you look at 57 games he started, um, and just I like how I like his he's a long player. The guy's got an 84 inch wingspan, and um, I just. You hear nothing but good things about him. He's just kind of a quiet, unassuming guy. Goes about his business just like an offensive lineman would and isn't looking to draw attention because that means penalties and (laughs) all those kinds of things. But, no, uh, you know, 1,070 snaps, five penalties, uh, and and one sack allowed last year. And and that's the other thing. And a common thread in a lot of this free agent class that they have agreed to uh, they have come off of pretty significant injuries and then mm-hmm. but almost two years ago and then played very well in the follow up season. Chidobe Awuje is is another, but you know, uh Lloyd Cushenberry had a, a groin injury that ended up putting him on IR in twenty twenty two. And so he came back, did fine. Um I'm sure they hate to lose him out there because they, they need help and but guess what? So do the Titans and, and the money, it's a lot. But look at what centers and right yeah. guards and right tackles look at what they're making and if you want to invest in your future which right now appears to be will levis you're going to protect that investment and he's still young i mean he's 26 years old so you're right i mean you're being that guy in the middle that's anchoring the line i mean you saw it like you said ben jones did it for so long and ben jones is very unique and he played through a lot of injuries but i just love the consistency i've seen from this guy the availability besides that 2022 season Mm -hmm. other than that he's played in almost every game no and Kayla that's the thing I think that is the message here in their plan of attack and free agency at at least a base level is that the availability the good film to choose from that you can see execution was there and they're in their prime years of their career now Adobe a Chidobe Awuja is a little older, but still very productive in his career in the NFL. So that's, and that's what I like about Kenneth Murray. I, I, Ramon, you remember this week two last year, the home opener against the Chargers. Yep. That dude had ten tackles and a quarterback sack. It's bringing it, and right. he can move yeah, now. He can. Uh, Thirty-eight inch vertical leap at the combine. I went back and looked at his stuff yesterday, and uh, again, you know. 25 years old, uh, prime of his career, played in plenty of games. So, you know, these these are good pickups uh, without necessarily breaking the bank. And Tony Pollard, you know how I feel about him, Ramon. Yeah. I thought he was the best back in <laughs> Dallas for a while. Even 
Zeke Elliott's last couple of years there as they started to use that backfield differently. Uh, but Pollard, again, broken leg, ankle, strain, all that stuff due to a hip drop tackle in late 2022, came back, didn't play as well in the first half of the season in 2023, but down the stretch mm-hmm. did fine. Um, and I go back to, you know, uh, some friends of mine and family members like, well, wh- why are they getting the same back as – same kind of back like Tajay Spears. Why aren't they getting another big pounding back? It's like, because that's changing. This is the revolution or evolution, I should say, of of this Titans offense. Three yards in a cloud of dust is not what this is about anymore. The run game will be a serious part of this. It will still, yes, but just in, in a different way. And the way I explained it to a neighbor of mine, I, I was like, listen, if you get the same, I said, they're not exactly the same back, but they have the same similar skill sets and mm-hmm. things they bring to the table. You don't have to alter your offense and your looks, and you don't have to be predictable. You don't, exactly. when you get a big inline blocking tight end that comes in and goes, yep, know what this play <laughs> yep. is. Yep. Different. It's different now. You're going to, you are you have continuity back there. You can keep moving, get your guy a rest, bring in your next guy, and keep rolling with this thing. I'm interested to see what all this looks like, but uh, you know, you could see the writing on the wall. And look, for everybody that is mourning Derrick Henry, he said goodbye at the end of that Jacksonville game. He got a microphone to yep. the people left in the stands and told everyone thank you. He wasn't coming back here. He knew it. You know, uh, I'm sure that they there was some kind of conversation, but there's a difference in what this thing's going to look like. I'm excited for it because – this is what the modern NFL is now. Right. There is uh, one piece of news from Diana Rossini two minutes ago who says the Vikings came close to extending wide receiver Justin Jefferson last offseason. In Indy, GM Kwesi Adolfo Mensa, who worked with Rain Carthon mm-hmm. as members of the San Francisco 49ers organization, aggressively rejected the idea of trading Jefferson. Kirk Cousins' departure has not changed things. Diana Rossini says the Vikings have no plans to trade Jefferson. Sources tell her and Alec Lewis of The Athletic. So there you go. There's that. No surprise there. Uh, Rhett Bryan in studio with us this morning here in hour number four. Coming up, we'll talk about Legereus Sneed. We'll talk about Jerome Baker. Two of the four defensive options the Titans have been linked to. We could talk about all of them next with Rhett Bryan. Hey, it's Kayla Anderson. You've heard me talk about the Youthful Cleanse by Daily Defense, but Members Nutrition also bringing affordable and quality supplements to you at a fraction of the normal retail cost. Uh, Yes, they are made in the USA, and no matter what type of supplement you're in the market for, maybe it's immunity supplements, weight loss or detox, like the uh, cleanse that I talk about all the time, men's health, women's health, relaxation supplements, they have it all. And now they are proud of their supplements and announcing that, guess what? You can get them for an extra 50% off your purchase on the already discounted prices. Um, No code needed. The discount automatically applied at checkout. And again, such a variety of supplements. Uh, I've taken a couple of them right now, actually, to help with my gut health, and they are awesome. So you can now go to membersnutrition.com to find out. Again, membersnutrition.com to find out more.
RKW, Ramon, Kayla, and Will rocking along in hour number four. Um, brewed up by Eighth and Rose. Trent Bryan in studio with Ramon Foster, Kayla Anderson, Will Bowling. We have a tweet of clarification from our very good friend Buck Rising, who takes over these airwaves in just over a half an hour. He says on Twitter a few minutes ago, clarification, Titans brass were on the confirmed attendees list for the Georgia Pro Day today, but opted to continue free agency work from Nashville instead. So we said about an hour ago that uh, Ran and Callahan, Calloran were in Athens and they are not in Athens. And with uh, Brock Bowers and Amarius Mims not working out because of respective hamstring injuries, perhaps that incentivized them to stay here and work on free agency instead of going to Athens, Georgia. Makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they probably have representation there that are looking. Because uh, yeah. there's, oh. there's other guys involved in this, not not the outside of those top two prospects from that program. But, yeah, and that what, makes sense. What we learned from them were, and he said this publicly, most of their scouts are regional as far as being in this area. So that's a drive down. Hey, you put that on an expense report, get your cash back, and do your evaluation of work and get back home. Bingo. There you go. Yeah. It also like means it. they're still working. Because yeah. I think some people looked at yesterday and was like, "Oh, it's kind of oh. quiet yesterday." Okay, I'm like, Kay "Okay, chill Kayla, out." Kayla, I'm so chill glad that, I'm so glad you brought that up. Public service announcement, everyone. <laughs> uh oh, uh, that stuff. None of it becomes official until three o'clock this afternoon. Okay, and then there's all kinds of moves. There's a first wave, but second wave, a third wave. There's stuff you can do in the summer. There's stuff you do post June first. Just just hang on to what you got. I, I mean. Just remember, in the last couple of years, they hadn't been able to do jack squat in the first couple of three days because they were up against the cap. Just because the, the floodgates are back open with what's available limit-wise on the credit card, now that you've cleared the balance, doesn't mean you go hog wild crazy. It, they're going to keep working. Just There's a plan. I'm sure there's a plan. I have no idea what the plan is, but I'm starting to see it develop as we've got the first handful of reported moves uh, that have come out in the last couple of days or so. They've also got guys visiting too, so uh, in yeah. terms of some workouts and stuff. Yeah, well, in the other, yeah, they're, they're starting to do top 30 uh, draft visits. Chris That's Abrams right. Drain from Missouri has been reported by Justin Mello of the Draft Network. He does an excellent job there. Um and that's, of course, that's a that's a name that sticks in the craw of Vols fans because you remember what he did to the Vols a couple of years ago. Hey, what do you have, a pick six, or did he have a I return? I think that was this year, wasn't it, I don't against know. Joe Milton? Because they did have a pick six against Tennessee this year. Seems like he might have had a return for a touchdown. Anyway. Yeah, I, I, I believe you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm with you, man. I'm with you. You're supposed He's to go the other now. way, though. He's <laughs> Well, uh, you, you mentioned the Titans uh, couldn't get Jack Squat. Jack Squat does sound like a great inside what? linebacker. It does. You know, he does. Jack Squat. That's a corn-fed Nebraska <laughs> linebacker. Who 6'3", had 242. 135 tackles last year out of Des Moines. Runs a 4'5", 240. Maybe he's got a 36-inch vert. High a, IQ. Sneaky yeah. fast. Sneaky uh, and, athletic. And a long, longer prospect. prospect. Yeah. Maybe he's got nearly an 80-inch wing. Coach's yeah. son. Coaches. He's a real first in, last gym, out kind of guy. Rat. Yeah. He brings He's his lunch pail every rat. day. There it is. Yes. That's this is a fun game. We should make up draft <laughs> profiles. Uh, speaking of Hunter Renfro is available. Squat. What he lacks oh, in athletic God. ability, he Give brings it those. into smarts. <laughs> oh oh wow. He helps other people get lined up. He's a quarterback of the defense. Great team guy. <laughs> Potential green dot wearer. Let's go. He's a locker room guy. Never it's, it's have like, to worry about this guy. 4.0 GPA in high school. God. Oh, me, oh, my. Anyway. Love that. Rhett, Legereus Sneed is a guy who the Titans have been linked with. Do you believe that a 2025 day two selection could get the job done for him, as some are hypothesizing on X.com? I mean, anything's possible, and I wouldn't hate that that's what you might give up. I mean, cause you can't afford to give anything up this time around. You've got right. work to do. Um, I, I wouldn't hate that. It, look, like anything else, it depends on what the money is. What's a guarantee? I mean, look, in this free agent class, he is the DB. Yeah. He is DB number one. He has not come off the board yet. And uh, you could do worse because, I mean – I who, who in the world hadn't liked what he's done with Kansas City in the last couple, three years? So, just depends, man. We'll see. It, this this class seems to be, or can it be, I say this class is free agency signing and potentially this draft. 
Is this the hard reset of foundational pieces that this franchise has been needing for a while to where it becomes sustainable, too? That's where I am with this. Is And I said this earlier. When it comes down to us getting very optimistic about these signings, whether it's Chase Young, whether it's Jerome Baker, LeJarrius Sneed, and the signings that you all already have had, what's our end game, right? You know what I'm saying? Sure. And I know it's to keep pace with what Houston has done Mm -hmm. and what Jacksonville's capable of and the Colts, too. But I don't want this, and I don't even play here. I'm a fan of this team. And I just got to just say that because I want sustainability for this franchise. I want it to be built on the on the, on on a rock instead of sand. I don't want to overspend for guys like we've seen them in years past, and then they get used up and pushed out the door and go ball out somewhere else. And and, and that's why I come with the Legeria Sneed conversation for me. Like I want them and absolutely love to have them. Sure. But how long will you keep them when you get them, and what is it going to cost you or set you back? Uh, well, I mean, the last part is the most important. Breaking sports news on 104.5 The Zone. That was a great question. Too. Matt Barrows putting on Twitter, covering the 49ers for The Athletic. Barring an 11th hour deal, the 49ers are expected to release Eric Armstead this afternoon. And Diana Rossini says teams are expected to have interest in Eric Armstead. Sources tell me one of them is the Tennessee Titans, who will have interest in the soon-to-be former 49er. Wow. Not surprising. No, because you you hate to see Danico go to Houston. Mm-hmm. This would be th- that type of plug back in. He was there when Ren, Ren was there, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Don't hate that. Mm-mm. Sorry. Don't hate that at all. No, no, no. It, it, it was okay. Yeah. It, it was a good question by Ramon. Though. Yes, it was. So, I know. From what, your perspective, because you, you've seen day one well, up let, to now. Let's think about this. In, in this retool you're probably looking at trying to get the trajectory back to where you want it. Honestly, if we're talking about this, the time that new building opens up over there that they just broke ground on. Gotcha. That's where you really are trying to line this up. And so that what does Will Levis look by look like by then? All of these things. And that's why what we were talking about in the first segment with the reported free agent moves they made, younger guys, second contract, so in their prime uh, of their careers, um, with plenty to offer and plenty of experience. Um, yeah, I look, I think Legereus Sneed has a chance to build off of what he's done in, in Kansas City. Um, how long you keep him? I don't, I don't know. Mm-hmm. We're going to find out. And, and the bigger question to your point was, what's, what's the money and the compensation? If it's a third-round pick in 2025, I, I don't hate that. I, the, I'm kind of okay with that. Right. What's the money like? That's the biggest question. And look, that's another thing. All these reported deals, that's the window dressing that's, you know, put out by the, the these agents about, look at what I got my guy. He's got X and this. What's the guaranteed money? What does avoidable years look like on the back end? What, is it, what does it look like when you strip incentives out of it? What's the real deal, right? Because yeah, very rarely does a player end up playing the entire length of a contract in these yeah. days. Um, and if he does, he's a high caliber person with a lot of production. On the so. opposite side of cornerback, wide receiver is, I don't know if fans could talk even more, but it's just, it's always a subject, right? And because you haven't seen Traylon Burks maybe get to that mm-hmm. level yet, some people are out on him. Some people want to give him a new chance with this coaching staff, but you've got to continue to put depth at that position because there are so many question marks. Why maybe haven't they made a move in free agency yet? And is that possibly because the depth in the draft and that second round pick could be exactly that? Well, I think what you bring up is a valid point. And obviously we don't know what their mindset is, uh, Ran and and all that are involved. Uh, But yeah, I think that is exactly what, I think that has something to do with it. Uh, For example, we saw 13 running backs change addresses in this last two days. And I think that is an indictment on what this rookie running back draft class is like. And there's talent there. There's just not a B. John Robinson. There won't be a first-round pick, right? Well, conversely, that – I mean, this wide receiver class is – hoo-wee. There's a lot of good stuff. And throughout, right? Um, 
And but you look at what's left in free agency, they could still make a move. All right, so Traylon Burks, you, you talked about that. DeAndre Hopkins, uh, Kyle Phillips, um, you know, Colton Dowell's coming off of an injury. So there's you know, but who is it after that, right? Um, I looked at the re- remaining free agents before everything busts wide open at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Mm-hmm. Marquise Hollywood Brown is yep. sitting there. Tyler Boyd from the Bengals is sitting there. Calvin Ridley is sitting there. Paris Campbell, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Curtis Samuel. I mean, look, okay, is it is it T. Higgins or is it the best? No, but I'm saying there is an, there are very serviceable wide receivers that you could even get in the second wave of free agency. Um, but, no, I, I would anticipate there would be a, a move there in that group uh, because, you know, but, but what is the money like? Yeah. Um, in fact, it's so weird to see seven or eight wide receivers that's been mentioned with new addresses, uh, you know, in the last 72 hours and more running backs than anything. But, you know – Stuff changes when a Michael Pittman is, you know, tagged and then signed to an extension. I mean, you, you mentioned the the division. Yeah. Houston, Joe Mixon for a seventh. Dalton Schultz extension. They get Danico. They get Aziz. They signed Daniil Hunter to a two-year deal. They re-signed Kaimi Fairbairn, the kicker. Indy, it was all about keeping their own guys because they had good stuff. So Pittman extension, Tyquan Lewis extension, Grover Stewart, Zaire Franklin, uh, Kenny Moore, R- Rigoberto Sanchez. They haven't done anything outside no. of the deal. Jacksonville's the wild deal in this. They trade a <laughs> six for Mac Jones, Gabe Davis, Ezra Cleveland, Mitch Morse, Darnell, Darnell Savage. I mean, they're making some crazy – and by the way, that's a move to watch. Now that they've traded for Mac Jones, they'll cut C.J. Beathard. There's your backup there quarterback for the Tennessee yeah. Titans. Interesting. There you go. Battleground Academy's own. Mm-hmm. Bring him home. Beathard. Got a feeling you know that one, right? Mm-hmm. I like that. I don't, but it just makes sense. Okay. Because you can get him for – you you can you can be one of those rare teams right now in a window where you're spending six or – you know, six million and under for the quarterback right. position, yeah. which is ridiculous. I think that's also a good point just at any position, Rhett, to remind, to remind fans that – there is a second wave of free agency once all these teams that are spending money in the legal tampering period have to make corresponding cuts with roster decisions that have to be made by this weekend. The Chargers specifically have a lot of money that goes... By 3 o'clock this afternoon. Right. And that, then the, this Sunday, there are even further roster bonuses for Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, Bosa, Khalil Mack. Like, they've got money that's got to be paid this week. They're all peppered in around the new fiscal year. Isn't usually. Dillard exactly. on that list, too, for his extra? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> About $3 million, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah nothing crazy. But, and yeah, the Titans have the money. The Chargers to, are the one to watch this between now and the deadline. 100%. Because it's it's Bosa, it's Khalil Mack, mm-hmm. it's Mike Williams, and there's there's one other, and I can't remember who it is. But it's significant players. Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack, Bosa. Yep. Mike oh, Williams, uh, Keenan Allen, and, and Ke- uh, Keenan Allen, and Derwin James. Derwin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and they're twenty five, thirty million over the cap right now. So, right, there's going to be something that'll be a move there. Absolutely, um, and, and good players in all their uh, all those that we mentioned. Yeah. We had uh, former NFL GM Michael Lombardi on the show earlier this morning as well. Did who- he give you a trophy? Oh, never mind. Sorry, that was a dad joke. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Ah, you get me. You get me on that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, Michael Lombardi had this to say earlier this morning about the wide receiver market specifically. I, I think it's kind of interesting. You know, I thought Mike Evans would go for more than what he went for. I think teams are like going to take the same approach. You know, why am I paying all this money for a? You know, this the most overused term in the National Football League by media, by everybody, is a number one receiver. Like, those are not the, – the, they're not common. Like, the, you know, not every team has a number one receiver. They might have the best receiver on their team. But a number one receiver means you got to double them on every single play. Like, you don't have anybody who could cover them. Tyreek Hill's a number one receiver, right? You can't cover him with one person. So, like, it's hard to find those guys. And so I think when you overpay for what is essentially a second receiver, you're sitting there saying, wait a minute, I could probably draft this and get the same type of guy, maybe not as good, maybe a little bit better, 
for a lot less money. And I think that's what's happened in the league. I think people are starting to come to that conclusion. Now, look, Jacksonville signed Gabe Davis. They signed DuVernay, you know, and, and they may just sign Calvin Ridley back. Like, I don't know how they're going to get the ball to everybody. But to me, you know, when you build around the receivers, Bill Walsh used to say this all the time, it, it, the receiver position is the one position you should fix when the rest of your team is perfect. Because if you don't have it like the Raiders, the Raiders can't get the ball to Devontae Adams because they don't have a quarterback. So what good is Devontae Adams doing? I think that's interesting too, Rhett, and that's Michael Lombardi, former NFL GM, who was on the show this morning, and his presence was our trophy uh, on the program in hour two. You can check out the podcast. <laughs> that's a good one. Wherever you download podcasts, I am the LVP of this show, making terrible <laughs> jokes like this. But Rhett, I think specifically we are seeing Rand Carthon now prioritize spending free agent money on defensive players, it it seems like, with Chase Young scheduled to have a visit here, with Jerome Baker visiting tomorrow, with Eric Armstead, who you're now linked to, with Legereus Sneed out there, with Justin Simmons. It feels like maybe we are entering the phase of free agency, right, where if you're willing to overpay for something, it's defensive leadership to set the culture for that side of the ball. Yeah, and, and you think about, to go back to the conversation that – Kayla and I just had here about the the receiving uh, draft class. Uh, it, it certainly looks like at this early stage that you get your tackle in the draft, you get you a wide receiver or two in the draft, uh, maybe you get you another young drafted corner at some point. But uh, yeah, it, it certainly looks like that defense is what they're leaning heavy on, just based on what's being reported. The other thing too, Kayla, that has I think Mike Lombardi has a valued point with um, the receiver cut that we just played there about a true number one. Now, first quote about Bill Walsh. Bill Walsh had Jerry Rice, okay? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, John and John Taylor, come on, man. Yeah, Good grief. But seven-on-seven seven football has changed everything. There's going to be a pipeline of receivers in this draft almost every year. Will there be one where at the top of it there is – uh, a Marvin Harrison Jr., a Malik Neighbors, a Roma Dunze, a Brian Thomas. Okay, maybe not every year, but you're going to have value throughout the entire draft. I mean, you want any shape, size, form receiver. You want a big guy. You want an X receiver. You want a slot receiver. You want it, whatever. Um, you're going to get it. You can have it in this draft. The other part of this, too, going to the defensive part of this draft, there's not a great level of cornerbacks in this draft. I mean, yeah, there's a top tier with Terry and Arnold from Alabama and, and Quinion Mitchell from Toledo. There's there's a lot of nickel mm -hmm. cornerbacks in this draft. Maybe that is where you Let's... get a value pick later on in the middle rounds in this. Like, I'm going to give you an example. Andrew Phillips from Kentucky. It, it, he's kind of a Roger McCrary kind of guy. Uh, you you could get something like that later on and go offense top heavy in this draft at seven and thirty eight if you decide to stay at those spots. Sure, I would almost like say is when you mentioned the, the the nickel corners. Since I mean not since the Colts just paid a record number for one, that price is going to get expensive Kenny Moore too. Yeah, yeah. Kenny Moore is a good player. Yeah, he's yeah. A really good player. So it's just the balance of where the league is headed and how you got to start uh, yeah. making those types of decisions. And then probably getting them early in the draft is going to pay more dividends than anything. Well, and this is this goes back to something that, Will, you said right here on the show a couple of weeks ago, is that you had the rare opportunity to reset position value as the Titans franchise, maybe the first time ever truly, but you, you have a rare window where you can get really cheap a quarterback and see what you can do. So the question is, behind closed doors in these contracts are a lot of those heavily front-loaded in monies so that when Will Levis is, okay, we've got to pay him the bag, he is definitely the guy, you're in a position to be able to do it because you have front-loaded these other guys that you have brought in, and, and so you could able to play some some chess with your money like that always stay ahead mm -hmm. yep gary on uh twitter at ramon kayla will Rett says can we get back to that raspberry song that brought in this segment with ah! some commentary from at Rhett b tennessee okay. r.i.p eric carmen yeah eric carmen passed away yesterday at the age of oh. 74 and uh he was in that group way back when the raspberries that was uh go all the way one of their bigger hits he's more known though in the 
probably to to younger folks uh, in the eighties. He's the guy that did Hungry Eyes in the oh, Dirty Dancing. Yes, yeah. oh. he had a nice pop yes. career. There it is. So yeah, but anyway, I didn't uh, know he sang that. Me and either. then he had a just well, I didn't a. Even know him. a oh, <laughs> he had he had another one that is just a good lord crying your beer song called All by Myself, uh, in the seventies. That is that was his too. Yeah, yeah. He is hey. Rep Brian making us smarter about the Titans and about musical stylings throughout the years. Thank you, Rhett, as always. Thanks, Rhett. Thank you, pleasure. Rhett, Let's get ready for 3 o'clock this afternoon. Woo. And Titans fans, just hang on. Don't know if there will be moves again this afternoon or whatever, but there will be confirmations of what's been done. Just hang on to what you got. Hang on. We'll let this one play us out into our final segment and Inky Johnson next. It's a big Saturday night at Smashville as the Preds continue the march towards clinching a spot in the playoffs. On Saturday, March 23rd, see the Preds take on the Detroit Red Wings at 4 p.m. at Bridgestone Arena. Plus, you can join the Preds for Ford Military Week honoring active and retired military heroes. You can get your tickets at the game for the game at NashvillePredators.com slash tickets. But also this, y'all. Never miss a game when you can secure season tickets right now. They just went on sale for the 24-25 five season this year the prayers are giving you a jersey with your tickets plus a ton of other great benefits so lock in those seats at nashvillepredators.com slash season tickets
Wrapping up the show on RKW, brewed by Eighth and Rose, Ramon, Kayla, and Will. Happy start of the new league year, ladies and gentlemen. 615-737-1045. Final call for phone calls. The Buck Rising show is next, and he had quite a bit of info for the people about Legereus Need yesterday, so who knows what Buck will provide you over the next three hours, assuming he is on time. Chris in Clarksville wraps us up on the phones. What's up, Chris? Morning, guys. Happy New League year. Thank you. You too. Awesome. So, uh, just wanted real quick, just wanted to touch on Derrick Henry, uh, just for a quick second. Uh, just really going to miss him. I know it was the right move for the Titans to make to, you know, go in a different direction. And also, it's a good move on Derrick Henry's part as well. Gives him a, a chance to go ring chase and uh, potentially get a Super Bowl that he unfortunately couldn't get here. So, I wish him all the best. Not to the Ravens, but I guess. Uh, but but to him, I hope he has a good uh, rest of his career. Hopefully, he retires a Titan and ends up in Canton, uh, repping two tone blue. But uh, yeah, I, I, switching gears, I, I wanted to get into Legarius Sneed. Um, yeah, Legarius Sneed, like he's he's a guy that like I would just really like for the Titans to nab. Like yeah, like like was mentioned, like uh, like was said earlier in the last uh, segment. Like he's like the t- he's the top DB like cornerback in this uh, free agency class, even though he's tagged, but. Uh, yeah, like if they like if they can nab him for a 2025 third round pick, and if they and if they had to, I would I would include Traylon Burks in that trade. It, in my opinion, like correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's a lot harder to get a true like number one corner down than it is to find quality receivers. And uh, and as far as like Traylon Burks goes, he like as much as I want to see him turn it around and to like you know be productive and and be more consistent here in Tennessee we just haven't seen that uh, so far and I would rather get something that's more of a that could be more of a guarantee than what he's already shown yeah like I I, and there's plenty of options out there for wide receivers uh, in free agency and the draft so uh, yeah I would definitely uh add Traylon Burks in a package and it could give him a new uh, start to go catch passes from Patrick Mahomes and get coached up by Andy Reid. So I think that'd be a good option for all parties. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Not bad. Ramon, you said earlier you were out on trading Burks for Snead. Why? Uh, Because there's a new offense. He used similar type wide receivers in Cincinnati. As far as Brian Callahan goes, I think he has the ability to actually go into his potential. Um, wide receivers can be finicky. Every position in the NFL can be finicky. And here's the deal. If you send a trail in to Kansas City, um, are you a luxurious need away from playing, like really competing for a Super Bowl? That's the question we got to ask ourselves, too. I love the fact that we can go get them and that deal is on the table. But you don't have a second. Well, you don't want to give up a second because that means you got no second or third. You got to give up the contract, too. Are you a luxurious need away from competing for a Super Bowl? And the answer is no. So keep trailing if you're asking me. And also, if you give up trailing, then where's the rest of It's D-Hop. It's D-Hop. The, yeah, they'd have to have a, a solid plan. And I'm not a, against it completely. Uh, he has not been able to show anything of consistency in the last two years. I know that the injuries are more freak than they are soft tissue, but... The one good thing, yes, you have a new offense, you have a new mindset. They could definitely develop him. The other way is he's got two years. He hasn't really shown the dog, and I feel like at some point people are just like, we're done with him, and he's a first-round pick also. Like, you're supposed to show that a lot sooner. So you could go both ways, Ramon, but I think it's hard to pass over if if you throw him in for a guy that's proven and you get him for three more years. I'd rather keep Burks and just sign Kendall Fuller. Kendall's not gone yet either, yeah. No, he's not. Uh, in the FNM Bank chat, Chosen says, next man up. The issue is you don't have a next man. Yeah. Who? <laughs> Nick Westbrook Akine is a free agent. You know, the yeah. Isles been talking about Chris you. Moore. You could go get Chris Moore. Yeah, I'm saying, like, like, yeah. like, that's what we're talking about. The who? Isles. Like, who? 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 Who's the next man up? You also had Fair. this from former NFL GM Michael Lombardi on the show earlier this morning about your quarterback. This was Michael Lombardi on Will Levis earlier on the show this morning. Bert, do we have Michael Lombardi? (laughs) There we go.
many bad throws. You know, almost 17% of his throws were bad. Brett Favre used to say this. Every quarterback in the league can throw the ball through a door. Some of them can hit the doorknob, but only a few can throw it through the keyhole. And if you're going to win a championship, you got to throw the ball through the keyhole. And I'm not sure Will can do that. So if you missed that conversation in its entirety, you can download it right now wherever you download podcasts. But right now, we finish off the show with our guy, Inky Johnson. A little bit of midweek motivation. Tomorrow morning, you got Coach Mack. You've got Vol Network's Burt Bertelkamp. We got another Burt into the mix. Talk some Tennessee basketball after the SEC tournament starts. This time, we actually will have Burt Burt because we'll have two Burts. But right now, we have Inky Johnson. This says, um, talk is cheap, action is expensive. Right? And when I hear it, like... Action is always going to cost us something, mm-hmm. like always, right? It's like when you talk about love and people say love is a verb. A verb is interconnected to action, right? You can say it all day, but action has to follow it up. 